about themselves to understand what went wrong. I know we can find a way. I know we can find a way. I know we can find a way. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Uniting the races with truth instead of dividing them with lies. We're also rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man. I am Jesse Lee Peterson. Good morning. Welcome to the show. You can get involved by calling 888 7753 773. 888 77 Jesse. J-E-S-S-E, Jesse, my biblical question for this week, the biblical question, and it's a doozy, are you afraid you're not going to make it? Are you afraid you're not going to make it? That's my biblical question for this week. We have every way that you can support us. Watch and support. Listen on jessaleepeterson.com. jessaleepeterson.com. And if you are not able to sit and watch the show live right now because you're busy anywhere in the world, you can listen to it on your iPhone or iPad by calling the listen line at 641 793 one five zero zero six four one seven nine three one five zero zero. And if you are, uh, and you know, you can be listening for you can podcast, of course, but whether you're making breakfast, lunch, and dinner, lifting weights, whatever you might be doing. Or running and jogging, you can still be listening, all right? You can podcast some score. And don't forget to follow us on social media. Y'all know how to work that. Um, follow, subscribe, ring the bell, and all those good things, all right? You know how to do it. We're also on uh, X, JLP Talk on X, and Jesse Lee Peterson on Instagram. And to donate and have your comments read out loud, go to buymeacoffee.com slash J-L-P talk. Buymeacoffee.com slash J-L-P talk. Or rebuildingtheman.com. Rebuildingtheman.com. Or Bond J-L-P on Cash App. So you have many ways. Bond J-L-P on Cash App. Bon JLP on Cash App. Amazing. All right. So, it is Tuesday. It is Tuesday. And for the new uh, viewers and listeners, every Tuesday is Country and Western Tuesday. Can I hear Wait on God? Wait on God, wait on God. 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 Wait on God.
Country and Western Tuesday. And I know, because I hear from a lot of people who love you, that you really appreciate the music, the country and Western music. Amazing. I, um, I... Yeehaw! I, uh... The one thing I think about when I think about life and I reflect on it, life itself is fascinating. It is fascinating learning how to die from a false life in order to live a real life. To die from a false life in order to live a real life. It's not going to happen until you die from the false life. In order to live, you must die. From the illusion that you have about life, the false life, ideas. And I have to honestly say, growing up in Alabama, I witnessed uh, older men who were strong in that. They knew how to deal with life. They understood, they seemed to have understood the difference between the false life and the real life. So it was a, even though they didn't really talk about it, but you, as you observed them, you noticed how they dealt with the real deal, with life. I remember when the so-called civil rights movement started and the older uh, people was encouraging the younger people not to get involved with that. They were like, don't get involved with it. That's not good. Martin Luther King and those people are not for you. That's a bunch of mess, they would say. Don't get involved with that. And I see that that turned out to be correct because the, the people that did get involved with the so-called civil rights movement, the blacks, they ended up worse off than ever before in the history of America in that they lost their way as individuals. They have lost their way as to dealing with life and overcoming the false life, being responsible for themselves, knowing that no one else is responsible for you as an adult. They have forgotten that. And you don't see a lot of that, if any, you don't see a lot of that operate in America today. That men and women as individuals are understanding how to live life and just dealing with it. Knowing that the outcome for them would be fine without even knowing what the outcome is, not assuming anything about it. So I saw that growing up, and it had an impact on me in a big way, but I still had to learn what I needed to learn as well about life. But until Donald Trump, the great white hope, I haven't seen that type of uh, courage. And I don't want to use the word courage, but I have to in order to communicate with you. But I have not seen, and I don't know what the outcome is going to be with him either, but Donald Trump is clearly from the old school mentality, somehow or another. And I don't know if it's because he was close to his father. His father seemed to have had a great impact on his life. He talked about, wrote about how close he was to his father when he taught him and all that. And he seemed to have done some of that with his sons. As well. But, you know, I said the moment Donald Trump came down those stairs some years ago, a couple of years, a few years ago now, and announced that he was running for president, that make sure you observe this guy. Watch him. Have a little space between the two of you because people tend not to leave spaces between each other. They tend to become one with the person. And when they have one little misstep, they're out of there, right? because they identify with the person, not understanding what was really going on. So I've said, 
to make sure you observe Donald Trump. And, and thus far, to observe him in all these years that I've been aware of him. I know he was around with a TV show and all that, but I didn't pay any attention to the TV show. I knew, had heard of Donald Trump, but I had no idea about him. And Donald Trump, thus far, and again, I don't know what the outcome is going to be, but he's dealing with the issues that come to him in his life in a perfect way. In an amazing way, such that I've not seen in years, many years, many moons, since leaving Alabama. And I, I still want to encourage you that you should just watch him without any judgment either way. You're supposed to watch life without judgment of life, right? You're supposed to watch yourself without any judgment of stuff, of what happening. You don't call it good. You don't call it bad. You don't call it right. You don't call it wrong. You just observe yourself from within, the thoughts and feelings. And so I've been watching Donald Trump and his enemies because these people have made Donald Trump their enemies. He didn't make them his enemies. They made him their enemy. And he, I will watch how his enemies have done so far all that they could do to stop him, to destroy him. And so far, they have not succeeded at any of it. Amazing. It's really like I said before, it reminds me of what I read about his brother Jesus, Jesus the Christ. And seeing how Donald Trump is going through the earth and dealing with issues, because he seemed to understand that they're all spiritual, that is good or evil, right? I have not seen a human being deal with things like this since I left Alabama at the age of 18. Everything that they are thrown, and believe me, and Donald Trump is like his brother Jesus Christ, and that if, when Donald Trump is operating in America, he affects the whole world. The whole world is better off with Donald Trump in office and it's worse off with anyone else in office. The whole world is worse off with uh, Joe Biden, Bar the Father Messiah, Barack Obama, or any other president. But the whole world is better off with Donald Trump. Isn't that like amazing when you think about that? The enemies are afraid. The whole world uh, emulate, emulate Donald Trump and, and America. They feel safer. They, they make more money. They, whatever it is, right? I've not seen anyone like Donald Trump before. I listen to his words. I remember when Donald Trump that was asked about the war uh, between Israel and Palestine and so-called Ukraine and Russia and, and anywhere. He said, well, I want peace. He didn't, he didn't go like, well, I'm going to go over there and keep butt. And we do. He like, I want peace. I make, I bring peace. I've not heard anyone else speak in that way. So I, I still want to encourage you without any judgment at all. And I know most people are on an ego trip, so it's hard for them not to do that because they judge themselves. They're going to judge everybody else. But watch him. Just have a little space there. Watch him without right or raw or thinking that you know what the outcome is going to be and blah, 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 because we don't. In all honesty, we absolutely don't. And I know it looked like he's going to win the election, because it seems as though everybody is for him except the government and the liberal media and some conservative media and the Republican representative. They're not for him. But the voters seem to be for him. And so there's a major assumption that he's going to win. But we really don't know. We'll know in November what happened when the people vote. But just observe how he is dealing with things. 
when I see him in the media, he doesn't look stressed out. He doesn't look worn down. He doesn't look worried. He doesn't look defeated at all. He looked like he lost some weight. But just observe him. I've not seen anything like this since I left Alabama, as I said earlier. And uh, a little update on, on the Great White Hope. This is from ABC. After a two-week trial, a jury took less than three hours on Friday to return a verdict that Trump should pay E. Jean Carroll over $83 million in damage for two defamatory statements made by the former president in 2019. Watch this from MSNBC. Starting in a New York City courtroom on Friday night, where the spectacle candidate, I bet you know the one, Donald Trump, was ordered to pay over $83 million in damages to writer E. Jean Carroll after he was found liable for sexually assaulting and then defaming her. The leading candidate for the Republican nomination, who will win the nomination barring something crazy happen, who had already been found liable for sexually assaulting a woman in a dressing room, has spent the last several months continuing to relentlessly attack her story, her credibility and her character turning the courtroom into a campaign, revving up the worst instincts of the Republican base by playing the victim card when you are attacking the women you assaulted, telling people that the system is broken and that you are the only one who can fight it. And on the other side, there is normalcy, steadiness, and perhaps most importantly, a focus on the country and not on yourself. Amazing. A, w a female with, who lacks understanding she cannot see this woman that's reporting that from abc or msnbc no abc msnbc sorry amazing and she was a uh, former uh press secretary so-called press secretary for joe biden and i believe barack obama the fallen messiah Jan Saki, Jan Saki, whatever her name is. Anyway, they don't understand what's happening through this man. They can't figure it out. When have you ever heard of a court awarding $83 million in damage from a person that accused someone of anything? They're trying to stop him. They're trying to break him. And they want to break. The one thing they have not been able to do is to break his spirit. And they don't understand that. They don't know of anyone, nor have they heard of anyone, because they don't know about Jesus, that have, they were unable to break his spirit. Amazing. It's so, I want, again, I want to encourage you to just observe Pay attention when he speaks. Watch him, how he deals with his responses to things. It's different than you hear from uh, low-grade people, people who are blind and can't see. Everybody say the same thing and react the same way to issues when they cannot see. And Donald Trump, so far, has not operated that way at all. I would encourage you to watch and understand. According to ABC, Carol said about seeing Trump in court, he's just something in a suit. Talk about men being hated in this world, and men are hated in this world, the whole wide world, because of who their father is though they have been turned away from their father, but because of who their father is, they are hated. Even hated by other men because other men don't understand. They have the wrong mindset, the wrong nation, na uh, nature. When I say that our battle is a spiritual battle, believe me, it is. 
So this is from the National Pulse. The award in, of nearly 90 million to E. G. Uh, Jean Carroll will be remembered for generations as the greatest miscarriage of justice in contemporary American history. That's from National Pulse. Has never happened before. And you know why? Because there has never been a man like Donald Trump in America. And that's why that has never happened before. And it just a warning between now and November, just from now to November of this year, it's going to get worse on him. And believe me, there are a lot of Republican representatives who don't want him there either because they're no different than the Democrats in that in that they want they don't want Donald Trump in there because they want to be for themselves. They want money and power. They're no different than the government. They support war. And if you pay attention, they have not done one iota of a thing, zero, to make America great again since Donald Trump left. The Democrats have done everything they wanted to to destroy America, one thing after another one, and the Republican representative, zero. Because they are just like the Democrats. They agree with them. Zero. And all they do is take people to court for here, like Joe Biden and, I guess, Joe Biden's son here. Their focus is on that. And now they're talking about another hearing about the guy that's supposed to be in control of the border. They want to impeach him. That's all they ever do, sit around and talk. And if they impeach the guy that is supposed to watch over the border, that ain't going to stop nothing. But at least the Republicans can hold a press conference and say, we, oh, we're trying to do something. No, they're not. If they were serious about uh, doing something with the border, they'd be doing what the Texas governor is doing right now. They would be taking some type of action down at the borders. But well, they haven't done anything. They haven't done anything. Isn't that amazing? So according to ABC, Carol says... She planned to use $83 million on something. $83 million on something Donald Trump hates. Watch this from MSNBC. You've talked about using some of Trump's money that you're about to get um, to help shore up women's rights. Do you know what that might be, what that might look like? Yes, or, Rachel. Or, yes. Tell me. I had such, such great ideas <laughs> for all the good I'm going to do with this money. First thing, Rachel, you and I are going to go shopping. We're going to get completely <laughs> new wardrobes, new shoes, motorcycle for Crowley, new fishing rod for Robbie. Rachel, what do you want? Penthouse? It's yours, Nothing. Rachel. Penthouse and uh, France? You want France? You want to go fishing nope. in France? Amazing. What a nutcase, huh? She wants, she's already spending the money. She ain't got it yet. <laughs> I talked about that Sunday at the fellowship. When you feel like you're going to win the lottery, just playing the lottery, you already spend the money for you. They even pull the numbers. So you're already living in the future. Isn't that amazing? She's going to buy everybody something. Good versus evil. Right versus wrong. I, I, I want to just remind you, observe Donald Trump and how he dealt with issues in his life and realize that the issues that is happening are happening to him in his world. It's not happening to you. 
your issues are happening in your world. His issues are happening in his world. And just think, think about this. Donald Trump does not have to be running for president. Isn't that like amazing? He doesn't have to be running. He can even say, you know what? This is too hard. I can't handle this. This is too rough. I'm not going to run for president. I don't have to. I can go over to my mar lago place, whatever you call it, and, and just relax and just play golf every day, have lunch. I'm already set financially, he can say. But he's running in spite of all the attacks from the left and the right from every side. That's mind-blowing. The great white hope. This woman, this female, Kara, oh, I'm going to do, I'm going to spend the money on everything. Donald Trump hates. Donald Trump don't care about that either way. Uh, ABC is reporting that Kara's lawyer, Roberta Kaplan, said, if we have... If we have to bring another case, we'll bring another case. It's just going to be more money. Money, money, money. They love the money. It ain't about the country. It ain't about what's right. It's about self. All egos are about self. Even the no good Nikki Haley the female that took down the Confederate flag in Carolina. She weighed in on it. Lord have mercy. And you want this for your president. Well, you really don't want it. New York Times is reporting, Nikki Haley said she trusted a jury judgment in Donald Trump's sex assault defamation case. Watch this from... NBC. Let's talk but about I'm not going anywhere. All right. Let's talk about the court cases. I have always said I think Donald Trump has the right to be on the ballot. I've always said I trust the American people. They know how to make good decisions. And so I think that they're going to see this for what it is. They see that he's completely distracted. They see that he's going on these rants about how he's the victim. I was teased every day for being brown. And I think that's exactly what they, we don't need a strong leader to be. And so, you know, these court cases are going to keep happening one by one. We're going to keep seeing him in a courtroom and we're going to see him come out and do a press conference. That I absolutely trust the jury. And I think that they made their decision based on the evidence. Let him play the loser. That's what we want him to do at the end of the day. And that want to be the president. Do you believe me now that is not in the female's nature to lead? She was created to follow, to be a servant to her husband, not to lead. Watch, observe him without an opinion. Is, are you able to live life without an opinion? Right or wrong, up and down, of yourself and others? You should give it a good try. It's amazing. 888-7753-773. Back in a moment. You can't run from evil within yourself or outside of self. You got to deal with it. And you need good in order to deal with evil. And God is good. You need to return to the Father. And you'll see within you, he will fight the battle for you. And he will fight it without because he will show you how to deal with it. And you will have no fear. Love God with all your heart, all your soul, all your might, along with nothing else. Nothing else means yourself, your children, your wife, your things, your ego, your reputation, and all that. You can't care about any of that. The children of anger will use it to control you. But if you love God, he will renew your mind 
and none of those things will be before him. And so when they go after you, oh, well, you may take my body, you may take my things, but you're not going to take my soul. And that's a true reality. Thursday of the month, we hold the men's forum. And if the Lord is willing and the creek don't rise, this Thursday is men's forum. And uh, at 7 p.m., come on down. And, and the third Thursday, ladies, for ladies only, when I reflect, I think about the last meeting we had of last year for the women, it was deep. It was mind-blowing. They are working on themselves. You got to work on yourself. You got to watch what's happening inside of you. You got to turn from outwardly and start living and watching from inwardly if you want to be free. It's a, you can stay in your hell. You can totally live in your hell and be jealous worry, afraid, or whatever. Or you can come out of your hell. And, um, you know, we have these these uh, T-shirts on uh, rebuildingaman.com slash store. And then we have the one that said, no such thing as racism. It's back now. You can order it again. Other amazing stuff are on our store. But you can order again. Go to rebuildingtheman.com. We have the Father Messiah mug. We have Big Mama Michelle. Oh, the wall going up. No such thing as racism. Good stuff, huh? Stop having sex out of wetlock. Beta male. Never, ever, 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 but never. Tell a woman your problem. We have... Uh, that one's small, but it says... Your daddy. That's the one, yep. Your daddy didn't leave you. He left your mama. And more. So go to rebuildingtheman.com. Just imagine the number of children, young and old, male and female, who thought that their daddy left them because mama lied to them. Mama lied to them. They thought their daddy left them, but he left the mama. Daddies love their children, young and old, and when they leave, they don't leave the children, they leave the mother because they can't handle the mother. Anyway, I want to go quickly back, just finish up on the great white hope here, what's happening to him. And I want to encourage you to watch. And watch without an opinion. Which is like, it's like asking most people to pull your teeth with a plow, a pair of plows. Because most people cannot live a life without opinions. And they think that their opinions are right. It's like Bible thumpers. They read the Bible and they, they get the intellectual knowledge of the Bible. Excuse me. And they hold on to that knowledge intellectually and they start to repeat the knowledge as though they know it. They identify with the knowledge of the Bible. Now they think they know God. That's how people are with the great white hope, Donald Trump. So 
So just a little bit more about this. I, I mentioned the the uh, lost Nikki Haley, right? We played that just before the break. Uh, here's some interesting facts from Breitbart. Birdolph Gutman has no surveillance videos of the alleged incident, and there are zero witnesses to the alleged sexual attack. Carol was unable to remember when this alleged attack even occurred, and the dress she claimed to have worn, worn during the alleged incident was not even available at the time of her claims. That's from Breitbart. But in America today, all the women have to do is say it. Go to court and cry a tear. Men don't have a chance. That's why I tell men don't don't waste your money. Amazing. Another thing from Breitbart, Carol first came forward with the allegation while promoting her book, What Do We Need Men For? This was in 2019. And here's a photo of her book. What do we need men for? What the? <laughs> what a joke. Isn't that amazing? Amazing. Amazon.com, uh, America's longest running advice columnist, goes on the road to speak to women about hideous men and whether we need them. Isn't that amazing? This female going after the great white hole. And she talk, apparently talking to other women about it. I guess she's a, a vice columnist or something it was. Can you imagine going to that for advice? Ladies, I would recommend do what you want. And some of you are already doing it. I'm very aware. But you need to come out of that world. Stop identifying with it. Because you will be misguided. Take control of your own life. Think for yourself. Become an individual. And believe me, there are males that think just like women about Trump's situation. They have the mindset of the woman and the emotions that come with it. So I do understand that. They think just like the woman about Trump or about anything because they have not returned to the father. Amazing, huh? And I've said it a thousand times, you are your own world. What's happening with uh, the situations that the great white hope is dealing with, Donald Trump, is happening in his world. Not your world, not my world, it's happening in his world. Watch how he deal with things in his world. Just observe him. I want to give you an example of the view from hell. This is from the New York Post. The sixth co-host of The View got caddy Monday when they walked out to, when they walked out to For the Love of Money by the OJs while celebrating the verdict. Watch this from The View. <laughs> And that's connected to the fact that you know who <laughs> has to pay <laughs> money, 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 money. Woe unto the woman or the man that rejoice in another man's pain. Woe unto them. 
Now do you believe me when I tell you that the hell come through the woman? You did. You saw that. That's the hell that entered the earth through the woman. That's the hell that entered the children through the mother. And they're celebrating. And while they're celebrating, they're miserable. They have a phony, happy smile on their face, but inwardly, they are in hell. They are in hell. And I'm being told that that's the theme song for The Apprentice. Have you ever seen, other than Jesus Christ himself, have you ever seen one man so hated? And all he wanted to do is work for the American people to make your life a little more comfortable in that you have jobs, you have, you'll be protected militarily. The border would be closed. He, he, uh, that's all he wanted to do. He doesn't need your money. He doesn't have to be running. And these females are celebrating evil. Evil come through the woman. The God above is the man's God, and the God below is the woman's God until she over returned to the Father. War unto the view. The ones that were dancing in the audience and the ones on stage that are celebrating another man's issues. You have no idea what you're doing to yourself. Because what you're doing to others, you're doing it to you. What you're doing to others is exactly what you're feeling in your world. It's happening inside of you. So you're really doing it to yourself. Amazing stuff, huh? Now do you see it has nothing to do with racism or sexism or homophobiaism or dare be dadism or Allah U Abbaism white sim or white supremacism anti Semitism. It's no isms. It's either right or wrong, and every human being that has anger are evil. Trust not an angry person. And you just see that on the stage right there and in the audience of the so-called view. They're celebrating. And yet, they're miserable. Amazing, huh? I uh, want, this is, um, you've heard of Louis Farrakhan, right? And when my producer, Sean, told me that Louis Farrakhan support Trump, I'm like, what the? Unless Louis Farrakhan had a change of heart, Louis Farrakhan believed, I don't know what he believed now, that the white man is the blue-eyed devil and that he came, that he was built by some angry black men who went into a laboratory and created the white men, man, and they created the blue-eyed devil, something like that. But apparently, maybe he had a change of heart because you can change. You can have a change of mind. And so apparently, Louis Farrakhan is now supporting the great white hope, Donald Trump. This is from C-SPAN. The Nation of Islam leader, Louis Farrakhan, called President Trump an anomaly, saying that God has sent him. So maybe the blue-eyed devil ain't from the devil after all. What the? I mean, God has him here. Sorry. He said that, saying that God has him here. Now you know you better watch, right? And observe the way the great white hope dealing with the issues. Watch this compilation. The nature of this administration is good for us. Because of Trump's way, he is an anomaly. There's never been no president quite like Mr. Trump. There's something that he's doing. Trump is destroying every enemy that was an enemy of our rise. Who's the enemy of our rise? 
Is it the Department of Justice where we get none? Is it Congress where you make a law that favors us and then you turn around and destroy it? Is it the media that has destroyed every black leader that stood up for us? Martin Luther King suffered it. Malcolm suffered it. He's attacking the media, calls it fake news. He's beating up the FBI. Go at it, baby. God has him here. What did you say, Farrakhan? And you know what? He's real. Wow. I rest my case. Louis Farrakhan says God has him here. And he's real. He has risen from the dead. And he's alive. He has risen from the dead. He's alive. Amazing. I never thought that one day I would hear Louis Farrakhan say that about any white man. <laughs> now, do you know that Donald Trump is having a major impact? He's waking up the dead. God has him here. Says Louis Farrakhan. That's amazing. That's like Mamma Mia, Ula, Sea Senor. Gosh, is amazing. I have not seen anything like this since leaving Alabama. Black men used to be this way. In the good old days, When boys were boys and men were men. Trump is from the old school. Watch this. This is going to blow your mind. This is going to take it home and serve sweet potato pie with coffee. Watch this. And I've said over and over, he's from the old school. Watch him and learn. This is from CBS. The Republican National, National Committee has pulled a resolution to consider declaring Donald Trump the party's presumptive 2024 nominee before he formally clinched the um, requisite number of delegates. Isn't that amazing? Like, you know what? Let's just go and announce that he's the man. We ain't got to wait for no delegate and all that kind of stuff. Donald Trump is the man. But guess what happened? Trump posted on Truth Social that while he's uh, greatly while he greatly appreciate the notion, he felt for the sake of the party unity that they should not go forward with this plan, but that I should do it the old-fashioned way and finish the process of at the ballot ballot box. He's like, no, don't do that. I'm going all the way with this. Let's do it the right way. We're going to go to the ballot box. How many men would have been able to say, no, we got to go all the way. We got to go to the ballot box. They would have grabbed that opportunity so fast to make you swim it in the head. But he said, no, that's old school. When I... My producer and I was going over this. Right away, I thought, wow, are these Republicans trying to set Trump up? Because the representatives don't want Trump. Most of them. Not all, not all, not all, but most. And, and I'm like, this sounds like a setup. But Trump didn't fall for it. It might not be one, but the fact that they came up with an idea like that, it was something else behind it, I thought. I may be wrong. But he said no. I'm going to do it the old-fashioned way. 
I want to keep party unity. I want to do it the old-fashioned way and finish the process off at the ballot box. Now do you understand me when I say it? Watch, observe without opinion, either good or bad, right or wrong. You can live that way, you know. You can live your whole life without any opinion about yourself or anyone or anything, really. You can live a life of no thinking. As a matter of fact, if you want to live a full life, you must live a life of no thinking. A no thinking life is what you want. A thinking life is hell. Everyone who is into thinking are miserable. They're in hell. I know a lot of people love their hell. They love their misery. And they try to impose it on others, but they love their misery. Amazing. The great white hope. Let me see what he has to say today. I don't know. I don't know what he's going to say, right? I have a running war with the media. They are among the most dishonest human beings on earth. <laughs> I rest my case. Amazing. Amazing. The great white hope. You have not seen a man on this earth dealing with issues in his life or the situations like this before. Amazing. Let me go to Russ out of Virginia. It's funny when I hear, when I say Russ, I hear Joy out singing, Russ with the fuss. <laughs> Russ, out of Hampton, Virginia. Welcome to the show. Man, that is so funny that you said that. I can't believe that you even remembered that. It, that it came so in my funny. thoughts. I'm sorry. Russ with the fuss. <laughs> Russ trying to fuss. <laughs> hey, hey, listen. Okay. I called. You like Joel's music? I love Joel's music. Right on. You, you watch his yes, show sir. at 11 a.m.? Uh, it's hard for me to catch it, but when I can, I do. Oh, okay. Because I love his music. I love his energy, and I want to support him as best as I can. Right on. Amazing. But it's hard sometimes, but I try to do the best that I can. Right on. That's all you can do is your best. Yes, sir. Russ, hold on for me. Let me take a break. I'll come back to you right when I come back. Yes, sir. 888-7753-773. Our Hake is coming in with the Hake news, not the fake news, but the Hake news. Now, I'll be I totally back in a moment. I disagree with the way things are going, but you can't be angry because that's what the enemy wants. He wants to control you. They do things to make you mad so they can control you. It's like being married. And the wife would do things to make you mad or she would do things to make you feel good. And men do that to women too when they want something from the woman, especially sex. They'll make her feel good or they'll make her angry. And the woman's gonna have to say, you don't wanna be angry. You wanna speak up, you wanna disagree with what's going on, it's wrong, but do not be angry. Then you won't have fear, you won't have doubt, you won't have worries, you'll be able to see. But you gotta stay away from anger. That's why you must forgive your mothers and your fathers so that you can overcome the spirit of anger. It's a spirit and it's wicked. Nothing good in anger because it has no love, folks. You need love to defeat evil. And love is not a weakness. It's a strength. It's from God. It's his nature. A whole lot of mess going on in the world. This is the end of hour one of the Jesse Lee Peterson Show, Country and Western Tuesday, January 30th, A.D. 2024. Stay tuned for hour two. JLP will be right back. And you can call in right now during Hake News, Not Fake News, Crime and Theft, the new normal with this strong, this strength that we call diversity and inclusion. Kami Nonsense Network CNN reports that many stores are locking up their products behind clear display cases to prevent theft 
Uh, but Americans, so-called, are growing irritated by the complicated shopping experience. You have to call somebody over. Now some stores are testing a new way to let customers open the displays with their phones. Their phones? Uh, instead of waiting for an employee to come unlock the uh, deodorant or whatever you're buying that has behind the display case. And poor innocent black kids in schools hate suffering from hate crimes that's what's got authorities on alert say the far left female run outlet the skim hate crimes in schools yesterday first of its kind far left liberal fbi report revealed schools are the third most common location of so-called hate crimes in the usa the agency found the federal bureau of investigation that more than 4,000 incidents of so-called hate crimes in schools took place between uh, 2018 and 2022. More than 60% took place at the preschool through 12th grade level. Uh, The most common so-called hate crimes included intimidation, uh, vandalism, and assault. Black students face the most, most of the hate crimes at the schools. So-called hate crimes, no such thing, right? Uh, followed by LGBTQIA+, and Jewish students. It's unclear what's driving that increase. Supposedly there's an increase. The report, (laughs) maybe it's all this diversity stuff, and bad uh, parents. The report comes amid the Israel-Hamas war, which advocacy groups say has led to a spike in so-called anti-Semitic, and they spell it with all one word, no hyphen, and Islamophobic, imaginary thing as well, Incidents. What a mess. Meanwhile, in reality, a border battle, House Republicans will hold a markup of their impeachment articles against the Department of Homeland so-called Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas, not a Christian, today, moving closer to taking the rare step of impeaching a cabinet official of the evil Biden administration. Some GOP lawmakers say Alejandro Mayorkas has committed high crimes and misdemeanors for his handling, mishandling, of the U.S.-Mexico border, which is a mess, even though several constitutional experts have said the evidence does not reach that high bar. The Department of So-Called Homeland Security has blasted House Republicans over their upcoming committee vote, calling it a farce and a distraction from other vital national security priorities. At the same time, our greatest president, Donald J. Trump, is aiming to derail that bipartisan, which almost always means evil, uh, deal on the matter of so-called border security, which is, a, which is itself a farce, uh, saying that he would embrace border policies far more draconian than those considered with that bipartisan rhino bill, Democrat bill. Peace in the Middle East, not crooked Joe Biden, that's the so-called president, met with security advisors on Monday to determine how to respond to the drone attack that killed Americans in Jordan, uh, killed and wounded U.S. service members on Sunday. Evil Biden said that the U.S.'s response is likely to be far more powerful than previous American retaliatory strikes in Iraq and Syria, though the Pentagon and Black on the Inside White House being careful not to telegraph the administration's plans. Elsewhere in the Middle East, Qatar, Qatar's prime minister, said that hostage and ceasefire talks in the war between Israel and Hamas are making good progress to get things back in shape and at least lay a foundation for the way forward. Good for them. Shout out to Qatar. Hamas said today that they are reviewing a framework for a potential deal, but wants the complete withdrawal of Israeli forces from Gaza. Fat chance, huh? I'm James Hake. Now back to JLP. Hour two. Can find a way. I know we can. 
Uniting the races with uniting the races with truth instead of dividing them with lies. We're also rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man. Good morning. Welcome to the second hour of the show today. You can get involved. There's literally one line open. If you want to jump in at 888-775-3773. 888 888- Seven seven Jesse, my biblical question for this week: Are you afraid you're not going to make it? Are you afraid you're not going to make it? That is an amazing biblical question. We have every way that you can watch and support the show listed on jessieleepeterson dot com slash show. And if you're busy and you're not able to sit and watch the show, you just want to listen while being busy, doing whatever you're doing, that you're doing, that you're doing, you can listen to the show on your iPhone or iPad by calling the listen line at 641-793-1500, 641-793-1500. Follow us on Rumble dot com slash Jesse Lee Peterson. You got to know how to rumble and cozy dot TV slash JLP. Cozy dot TV slash JLP where Christ is King. Amazing. <laughs> and to donate and have your comments read out loud, go to Bond JLP on Cash App, Bond JLP on Cash App, or buy me a coffee.com slash JLP talk or rebuildingtheman.com. It's Tuesday. It's the second hour on Tuesday. Second hour on Tuesday. It is Country Western Tuesday. Bring back, bring back, oh, bring back my country to me. Bring back, bring back, bring back my country to me. What dog? Who let the dogs out? Amazing. 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 888-7753-773. Let me go back to Russ out of Virginia. Russ, stay for holding. You're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, yes, sir. You said some really wild things while I was holding on to listening to you. I'm sorry? And you said some really wild things when I was sitting on hold listening to you. And one of the I want to say this first because I'm going to forget. You said something about living long or something like that. Living what? Living long. Living long. What did I say about it? I'm sorry. It just went right through my mind. I, I don't remember. You said something about living long, and it, it sparked a memory to me about I, growing up as a little kid, I never thought that I would live long. I thought when I was growing up, when I was a little kid, I thought that I'd be dead by 25. And now I'm 59 years old. I'm still living. And I know what made me feel that way back then. And what made me feel that way back then was the fact that my relatives, the males in my in my in my in, in my life, were dying young, like 
40, 30, they would die. And so because of that, I always thought, hey, that's my life. That's my, those are my people. That's what's going to happen to me. So I never thought I would live to be 40 years old. I never thought I would live to be 50 years old. Next year, I'll be 60. And I'm like, I was wrong. All I'm great thought- that I'm wrong, I, I'm wrong but. All thoughts okay. are all lies all the time. Dude, I was growing up, man. I was a little kid. I didn't know what I was doing. And not and I don't believe what you say that all thoughts are all lies. Why don't you don't believe, believe that? that? Why don't you believe that? Because you are a man and what you say is not True, all the time. Have you ever you had? A, you, have you ever had a true thought? All the time. And what? Give me an example of a true thought you have had. <laughs> what true thought that I've had was to call you. So I can voice my opinion to you. I'm talking to you now, right? That's a practical thought. I mean, a real thought. I'm not talking about practical thinking about, oh, I'm going to call the show and comment. Or I'm going to have chicken for dinner. Or I'm going to go to Mommy Africa this summer. Those are practical thoughts. You don't live by those thoughts. When this phone call is over, so is that thought. So what thought are you talking about then? The ones that have been controlling you in your life. The one that made you, for an example, the one that made you think you were going to die an early death. That's a practical thought. No, it's not. It's not practical and it's not true. You're still living. What the? It was an incorrect thought and that was it, just my way of thinking. It was a lie it thought. It wasn't true. Give me an example of a true thought Russ from Virginia has ever had. What kind of, what do you call a true thought? I just told you, I gave you an example of practical thoughts, and I gave you an example of a false thought when I said that the thought lied to you at an early age that you were going to die. No, no, you didn't. Tell me what a true thought is. Tell me. No, say say it's a true thought. Okay. Are you able to give so, me an example of a true thought Russ from Virginia ever, ever had? You keep saying when I give you a thought and you say that's not a true thought. So what? Tell me what a true thought is so I can no go out and do it. Right now. No such thing as a true thought. Wrong. No such thing as a true there thought. There is. No. There is. What is a true, true thought? I told you. I knew your program was coming on today. Now we're repeating ourselves. So give, give me something that I didn't ask you for a practical thought. I asked you for a true thought. Well, then you have to tell me what's the difference between a practical thought and the true thought. I just I gave you an example, man. I told you, you did when not. the thought lied to you that you were going to die early. And you just said that did not happen. That was a lie thought. That was a non-practical thought. Give me another example of a non-practical thought. Okay, I will. Once you give me an example of a true thought that Russ has ever had. When I tell you something, you said it's not. Right, true we gotta thought. move forward. We can't keep repeating ourselves. I got a board full of callers here that want to get on. Anything else? Yeah, I'm gonna write a song today. I'm gonna do it. Good thought. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> okay. I wish you well I wrote with a that. Song. I wrote a song last week. I thought about it and I did it. That's a thought. Uh, all right. The thought came true. It happened. Nice. But no. But you know what? This is this is 
a bad example of a question to talk to you about. That was not the original um, subject that I said. The original subject that I said was about Donald Trump. The great white who? To you, maybe. But not to you? No. Why not? Because Donald Trump is a big, stupid liar. Oh, amazing. Yeah, very amazing. Very amazing that he was... What did he he lie about? He lies about... He lies about (laughs) everything. Like what? He... He even lies about where his daddy was born. He's a liar. What did he lie when about? You're a liar. What when did you're he... a liar, Russ. you lie. Hey, Russ. Just to lie. What did he lie about? Where his father was born. When did he say his father was born? He said his father was born somewhere in some other country. What other country? I don't recall. But then how do you know he lied? Liar. How you because know you I lied heard then? it. Because I heard it, and I when I heard it, I know he was lying. You know because where his, his father, father? You know where his father was born? Yeah, New York. Oh, but he doesn't know where his own father was born. He does know, but he lies. And he lied. What did he say? His father born in New York? No, he said his father was born in some other country. And and he lied about that. Yes. And because you know where his father was born. Jesse. How do you know his father was born in New York? Because his father is rich. And when rich people exist, they have their information. Even, even. How how do you know where his father was born? Even, even. Russ. I'm telling you. Russ. Because of time, t- where do you know where his father was born? How do you know where his father was born? You knew his father? No. Sir, How do you know where his father was born? If you would let me tell you, even when you're famous, your information is well known. Even Alexa knows where Donald Trump's father was born. <laughs> That's amazing. Russ, I appreciate your call, man. Thank you. Yeah. Well, all right. All right, buddy. Amazing. 888 773 773 Let me go to Tony out of Missouri. Tony. I'm on right now. Tony, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Good morning, Mr. Peterson. How are you doing? All, all is well, Tony. How are you? All is well. Hey. Uh, I'm doing all right. I have a question for you. Okay. All right. This is going to relate to everything that's on my mind about the scriptures, uh, about the presidency. Uh, are you a beta male? Are you a beta male? Yeah. Are you a beta male? No. No? Okay. So are you an alpha? Would you consider yourself an alpha male then? No. No? Then what are you? Nothing. But you, I've, I've heard you say on your pa- past podcast that you were alpha nothing nothing right uh, all right so you're not and how so you're does not this relate to the scripture well okay so jeremiah 17 line 5 says thus saith the lord cursed be the man that trusteth the man and make his flesh his arm and whose heart departed from the lord we're exalting donald trump I, I i care nothing for him i care nothing for the biden administration but i can tell you that they are all corrupt they're all wicked they have one purpose in, in mind, and that's to divide and conquer. There's 25 Why are you exalting Donald Trump? You say you exalted him? You are exalting Donald Trump. What you're calling the great white hope. You're, call, you're exalting him over God. What like does that mean exalting, to exalt him? You're glorifying him. You're giving him glory as the great white hope. What does that mean uh, to you? Uh it means that you have an idol set up in your heart, friend. That you but do not that, really that worship the Lord that in spirit you. and truth. That means that to you, but not that to means, me. Well, 
So, that's, well, a, you, every, that's what you think. That's not what I think. Well, that's what You're the thinking that for yourself. That's, then, no, that's what the scriptures teach in the book of Isaiah. But says, that's still in your Lord. mind. That's not what I, I think. No, but the, I. But if you disagree with the scriptures, then you're still yet in your. I'm sin. disagreeing with because, you. Oh, that's you what you think. You can disagree all you want. Why are you? A beta are you, why do you? Are you, are you why, a beta male? Why do you? Exhort? You're a beta male. Why do you're you? a beta male. All right, you're thank you, buddy. I appreciate it. Eight 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 seven seven five three seven seven three. Bobby Thumper. Bob, I thought it's on Thursday, man. I can't be going on. You just repeat yourself. Amazing. 888-7753. I'm trying to type a note to Hake. Hold on, my computer. I don't know how to make it happen here. Oh, here we go. Okay, it's working. 888-77, Jesse. Let me go to Tony out of California. Tony, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Good morning, Jesse. How are you today? Good morning, Tony. All right, all right. I see you talking about your boy, uh, Donald Trump, the mafia head of the world. The great white hope. Yeah, you you can call him that when he's and you do you jail. agree with me that when Donald Trump is in power running the government, the whole world feels safe. How 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 he gonna run the world when he could be locked up, sir? It's that. not him, but it's the power that's in him. Yeah, okay. The the lie, the devil that's in him. Given I to him, him, given to him by God. It's like oh the. My. God, it's like brother, the anchor brother, baby brother. energy is given to him by God. Trump yeah, has the you, same. You, Trump has the same energy. You're right. Cause God created evil and God created good. So you're right, but I agree one thousand percent on that one, uh, 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 Mr. Lee, Mr. Peterson. But the thing is, the man went against the government. The man tried to overgo, overthrow our voting power. Man, what man are you talking about? Man. What man are you talking your, about? Your boy. Your and, great white hope. Your and when, great, when you say he hope. went against the government, what do you mean? Well, we elected Joe Biden for uh, president. When you he, say that Donald him. Trump went against the government, what are you, what are you talking about? I'm, I'm trying to tell you now. Look at January 6th. That's, that's what he did. Tony, January when you 6th, said the great white hope went against the government, what are you referring to? He lies. He lies, man. He what did he lie about? He lies about that the, the election was stolen. What, what he did he lie? Tony, Obama. Tony. He lied about Tony. Obama. He li- Bye, Tony. <laughs> Lord, help me. All that screaming and yelling coming on. I can't have a conversation with him. He's just screaming and yelling and just repeating what the liberal news said. That's all you're doing. Screaming and yelling. No Independent thinking at all. Zero. Wow, I'm getting a lot of deep callers today. Y'all really thinking. But anyway, let me go to Jaden out of California. Jaden, welcome to the, there's a light over by the way, 888-77. Five three seven seven three. Jaden out of California on the air. Yo, what's up, Jesse? Uh, all is well. Can you hear me? Go all ahead. Right. So I had a question today. I was at the gym today. I'm here with my little brother. I was at the gym with my little brother today, and this guy tried to. Uh, he got really mad. I was joking around with him. I guess he had anger in his heart from Satan, and he was like, "I had patience the first time, but this time I'm going to punch you if you keep talking, right?" And so. I backed away from that, but it got me thinking. I was like, I know, I don't know if you said this or not, but is there ever a time to like actually physically fight somebody or try to let everything go? Only when it's self defense. There's no other reason to be fighting. What if you like call my girl like a name or something? I can't. That's fine. That's his thinking. It's not uh, your girlfriend, it's not her. That's him. And he want you to fight so it can confirm the hell in him. He's trying to make you unhappy so he can 
dump his hell on you out of his world. Don't fall for it. But, uh, oh, okay. So you said self-defense. That makes sense. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never harm me. Nice. So then America, because the liberals are trying to take over America, how far do we have to go fighting them? Or should we just let that go as well? You mean physical fight? I mean, just like putting in the... I, I know Joel, he had an effort, he had a, a video on like you should not try to put effort in anything because that's a lack of faith. So should we not put effort into fighting the liberals and just have faith God will take care of them? How do you fight the liberals? Like argue with them, debate them, say they're wrong. <laughs> I understand. If you, there's a right way to debate, but you should never, ever, ever, but never, 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 ever, for one iota of a second, convince anyone of anything. Let them live in their hell. Let them be wrong because that's their world and that's their hell and it has nothing to do with anyone but them, that individual. So you, you, you should debate not trying to, to convince. Then, what, then why am I debating? Because the truth, if you are of the truth, it will work through you, and God will give you the right words to say. He would control your mouth, your tongue, and he would give you the right words to say that somebody out there may hear, and that will cause them to return to the Father. That's interesting. Is that what you do with all these liberals? Absolutely. Since I, I've been debating for over 30-something years, what and, the? And, <laughs> and I've never debated with anyone to try to prove anything to them. I've always wanted the truth to get out there to help those who are lost, to find their way back to the Father. That's a good point, man. Wow. And, and when you, as you are seeking the kingdom of God, it's going to naturally change from the negative, which is evil, to the good. And he will use you just like the devil used you when you were of the devil. We're not in control of anything, never have been, never will be, never ain't going to be, never can be. We don't control anything. We are being control. We're not in control of anything. So... As you're overcoming evil, good is taking over your life, and it will control you. It'll speak through you. It'll work through you. It'll guide you. It'll give you a heart of love instead of stone, meaning hatred or anger. It'll, it'll, it'll take right. over. It's, it, the truth is something else, man. It's powerful. And, and Jesse, I've been doing the silent prayer, uh -huh. and I actually have gotten peace from it. Yes. Like I, I, I can't put it, really put in the words to describe it, otherwise I'd be going into my intellect. But I do get peace from it. The problem is I've gained so much peace and like wisdom from it. That the only thing I fear is that God is gonna like send like challenges my way now that I have this peace and like I think that it might be the devil putting in my mind that you're gonna you're gonna get uh beat up now because you have the peace. You that is I mean? the devil putting it in your mind. God don't ch doesn't challenge anyone. He doesn't need to. He really? loves you. He, he sent his son and bought you back from hell and washed away all your sins. Why would he challenge you? Because in the, in the Bible, the every single person is getting challenged. <laughs> and in the, all the Christians are saying, like, God is challenging me, man. God's putting me through these trials. The Christians are lying. They don't know God. They just have an idea. <laughs> But God doesn't, right. God doesn't need to challenge anyone. He's not even fighting with the evil because the evil has no power. And likewise, we should not fight with evil because it has no power. We should just observe it, but what? not fight with it. Didn't it? I don't want to be a Bible thumper, but didn't Paul say he was challenged and he came after Jesus? He said God, God challenged him. Where Paul now? God challenged him to death, bro. Where he Paul? Lost, bro. He's dead. I rest my case. So you don't think anyone gets challenged by God? No, not zero. So when people are going through hard times, what's that then? 
They're of their father, the devil. It has nothing to do with God. Zero. You're telling me when people get, like, beat up and <laughs> abused and homeless, that's they're because their father's the devil? 100%. 100%. What? How does that make sense? How does it make sense that it's of God? It doesn't make sense that it's of God. It makes sense that it's of Because he's strengthening them. What? He's strengthening them. No, you're not. Well, you just say that, but that doesn't mean it's true. <laughs> uh, I'm telling you, he's not. Who Who is the person that he's strengthening? The person that's being homeless. He's, like, giving them the courage, or he's giving them the strength to, like, uh, face adversity. How is that? Because if you can go through being homeless, you can go through telling your mom, like, I, I forgive you. <laughs> That doesn't make sense to me, man. What the? You, so you don't think that if you go through something hard, that doing something a little less hard will be, like, easier for you to do? It may be in a physical sense, but not spiritually. So how does your soul grow, then? By by you letting go. And, and so you can overcome evil. The homeless person is a loser. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, there's no way you said that, bro. Homeless people are losers? Yeah, that's why they're homeless. They're losers. <laughs> All right, Jesse, I'm a big fan, bro, but that's got to be the worst take you've ever had. How no that? way homeless people. Not every homeless. Hey, how, I agree. If they're the homeless, how are they winners? <laughs> no, no, no. I don't... <laughs> Because they didn't choose to be that way. Well, some of them chose fentanyl, but like it, some were born in the homelessness. They're still losers. So they were born a loser? Right. <laughs> Are you a winner? No. Oh. Are and you I'm, a loser too? No. I'm neither. <laughs> so who's a winner? Nobody. So what, how can you say they're losers if you don't even know the winners? Beca because they are homeless. <laughs> but you don't have, like, a metric to go off of to say... And then don't even, just think loser. about this. A grown man or woman have decided or influenced by evil that they want to be on the street. They'd rather beg and be homeless and nasty and smelly and losers than to take care of their own lives. Jesus was homeless. No, he wasn't. Yeah, he just went around sleeping on people's couches. That's actually true. He wasn't homeless. It's in the Bible. It's in the Bible, though. He could have. Jesus was not homeless, man. Well, he was a couch surfer. No, he wasn't. They didn't have couches then. Whatever they, the rocks that they. Uh, <laughs> but I got him. He, he went into. Okay. okay what okay. he went into what? He went into people's houses, like random people's houses, and just stayed there. He didn't have a house. That was supposed to happen. If you notice, Jesus didn't build anything. He didn't go around building churches. He didn't go around starting businesses. He didn't go around doing any of those things. He just pointed the people back to the Father. So is he a loser then? He, he's neither one. Uh, come on, bro. At least Jesus is a winner. No, he had no identity. What? Oh. Uh, okay. <laughs> I appreciate it, Jane. Did have fun? I appreciate it too, man. All Thank right, buddy. You. Okay. 888 7753 773. Homeless people are losers. That's why they're homeless. What the? And they're mean and they're nasty and they throw their junk in, your, in the alley and they don't clean up. Once in a while, you see a homeless person clean it up. That's because his mama traumatized him, and he had to clean it up. When I come back, your calls and your super chats. Let me take a quick break. Back in a moment. We have a counseling service. And I have to admit, thanks to God, it is the best counseling service on this side of heaven. I counsel with men and women, families, individuals around the world. Most people are unhappy. They're miserable. They have rough lives. 
They're depressed, suicidal, young and old, of all races. I understand, I know why, and I do understand it. Because exactly what's happening in me is happening with everybody outside of me, inside of them. And I've noticed that with those who really, really, really want to understand, they overcome it just like that. Out of one counseling session. If you need counseling, you can go to rebuildingtheman.com or call 800-411-2663. 800-411-BOND. Best counseling service on this side of heaven. Country and Western Tuesday. Yeehaw! Amazing. Yeehaw! So at 9 a.m. this morning, and every morning, Monday through Friday, from 9 to 11 a.m. Pacific Time, the Hake Report dot com. The Hake H A K E Report. The guy with the good hair, and he's on fire. And after the Hake Report, Joe L. Friday TV, he black. Joe L. Friday TV at 11 a.m. Pacific Time, Monday through Thursday. And at 12 noon, the American Anchor Baby. He's an anchor baby. Energy alone from God. The American Anchor Baby at, el- at 12 noon Pacific Time. For personal shout outs, go to buymeacoffee.com slash Jesse Lee Peterson. Buymeacoffee.com slash Jesse Lee Peterson or rebuildingtheman.com. I will talk to Sean. Rebuildingtheman.com. Super Jet. Super, super. Super Jet. Super Jet. In answer to the biblical question. Are you afraid you're going to. Oh, are you afraid you're not going to make it? Ebonia on threads. Did you know that JLP, Jesse Lee Peterson is on threads? I didn't even know what thread. Never heard of threads. <laughs> but you're on it. Well, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> it's Instagram's, Instagram, Facebook's wannabe Twitter. Oh, uh, yeah? Yeah. Nice. Yep. Uh, Jesse Lee Peterson on th- threads. Uh, Ebonia says, yes, I'm afraid I'm not going to make it. Part of the reason I'm so hard on myself. Amazing. Interesting response, and I'll put my little two cents in on Sunday. Thank you. Uh, Mr. or Mrs. Mrs. Heat bought three copies. Hey, if you're too beta to say my name, say my name. Let Hassan read my super chats. Mr. or Mrs. Mrs. Heat and Hassan going to get in the lab together to make punch make punchy for Jesse. Stay tuned. Joelle, we might let you spectate. Crazy face emoji. (laughs) Sorry, guys. (laughs) Say my name. Say his name. Remember the Black Lives Matter people chant to say his name? What the? I just don't feel that it's appropriate. Right. But anyway, thank you. Make an appropriate name. (laughs) But thank you. Uh, Carolyn bought a coffee. How did Satan deceive Eve before the fallen state? Is it because she was created from Adam and once removed from God? Thanks to you, Jesse, and your crew. Awesome. Uh, Bambi eyes emoji. <laughs> <laughs> she, he deceived her because she believed him. She fell for the lie. Amazing. Thank you. Soul Conscious bought five coffees. Jesse, did you notice the fake sign language lady did a sleeping sign? <laughs> that was just too funny. Female Monday was amazing. 
Check out Female Monday. For those who don't know, every Monday is Female Monday. We take the ladies' call over all the calls. We take all calls about anything, but the ladies have preference on Mondays at all day, all three hours. Thank you. Valerie bought a coffee. But Jason, I did not notice that she did the sleeping sound, by the way. I didn't spot that either. Yeah, I missed that one. Thank you. Valerie bought a coffee. Jesse, you gave me courage to negotiate, and my request was approved. Thank you. Right on. As a reference to the old one of the old prior biblical questions. Yeah, yeah. Right on. Stay with it. Stay with it. It gets better. Amazing. Greg Achan bought a coffee. Jesse, I watched the Fallen Messiahs movie over the weekend, and I really enjoyed it. It wasn't perfect, but it's totally worth watching. The people who hate this movie only hate it because they hate the Fallen Messiah. Just watch <laughs> it for what it is and let me know what you think. Yeah, I've heard people say that they don't agree with the Fallen Messiah, Barack Obama, but they watched the movie without allowing that to get in the way. So right on. Thank you. Nice. No Mo Thoughts bought a coffee about the biblical question. How, I mean, are you afraid you're not going to make it? I don't quite understand the question, but I'm not afraid. I thought I should fight for things like finances and well-being. I think I should let that go. I'm not going to make it in either of those. Finances and well-being. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. You're not going to make it in either one? What and, the? NGMI, not going to make it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'll put my two cents in on Sunday. I appreciate it. Uh, there are several responses from your Your Mom's House ep episode appearance. Yes. Your, your mom's, mom's house? house. James Moore said, This dude is way more reasonable than I expected. JLP for Prez. A poor fat white. <laughs> as, the, as the guy who's <laughs> saying this. <laughs> Thank you. Uh I want your job, says JLP, reminds me a lot of my dad, who grew up in a segregated South. I grew up arguing with him about this exact thing, and he would say the same things JLP is saying. Almost exactly. He died not too long ago, and having grown up a lot, I regret those arguments more than anything. This was a good episode. Thank you. In the good old day, I'm telling y'all, I was a witness there. This is not something I read about, heard about, or went to some dumb black museum and saw fake news about, I was there. Black men and women were totally different than they are today. Totally different. They were independent thinkers. They worked for themselves. They treated people the way they like to be treated, all colors. And so that the whites, that were bad and good as, because we have good and evil, right? You're going to find that anywhere at any time in the history of mankind. But, Black people were not begging and crying racism. I never even heard the word racism growing up. It's a made-up word, right? And blacks were independent thinkers. They did. They bought land. They had a bunch of children. Everybody and their mama had a bunch of children for the most part. And they were not weak and pathetic as they are today. Victims and having false leaders, other people leading them. You know, it's supposed to have a leader over you. Nobody does, except for the truth, except for the Father. Amazing. Thank you. OMG, I'm a daughter, and he truly made me realize I'm not living the real me. This is referring to you on your mom's house oh, episode. Okay. Uh, I get what he's saying. I am living my mother's anger. I am angry. It's not based on my life. I'm making it about my life. If I let that go, I would feel wonderful. I need to cry about this and move on. Uh... <laughs> J.C. I, she's saying Jesus Christ as like an ex, exclamation. She may not be a Christian. <laughs> I can't believe something has clicked. I feel her pain separate separate to me and my feelings about her. Wow, that's deep. Isn't that nice? Yeah, that's deep. That's why I say when I debate people, I'm not debating them to try to prove a thing to them or argue with them or convince them. I want the truth to get out there to the hearers who might not have ever heard is that all you need to do is forgive. Forgive your mothers, because most people have not heard they need to forgive their mama. And their mama are evil, and the evil is coming through the mother. And they have not heard that. And so I'm just trying to put that out there. Let what the, the debater that I'm supposed to be debating, they're on their own. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't have sense enough to do it. It, just, it was natural. 
When I first started debating 30 something years ago, I was on Fox and all those different shows. I don't debate to try to prove anything. Christ did not try to prove anything to anyone. Either you see or you don't. He leave you right where you are. Thank you, though. That is deep. I wish you well. Braden says, JLP just changed my life. Also in reference to this episode, Your Mom's House on, with Jesse Lee Peterson. My mother left when I was an infant and never made contact with me. I first met my mother at her father's funeral, which happened to be a week after my father was buried. I was 22. I'm 38 now and still the same angry kid I was back then. But I've been perpetuating my anger by not forgiving her for never being in my life. I'm literally in tears right now because this man has exposed the truth to me. Thanks, Jeans. Amazing. Nice. Nice. See how people, there are people who wanted the truth, and that's who Christ was trying to reach. That's who I'm trying to reach. I'm trying to reach those who are lost and they want to find their way back home to the Father. It doesn't matter the color, male or female. People, there are people out there who want to return to the Father but just didn't know how. They really just, just, they just didn't know. Amazing. Thank you. Kaya in North Carolina bought a coffee. Hey, Jesse and crew, you have my word that this will be the year you try to you try peach cobbler and bacon cupcakes. <laughs> Maybe I'll pull up to Bond personally with a dozen. Shout out to Birdie Bound Brian for being a t- an amazing taste tester. He black. Much love to you all, and shout out to Joelle for being so nice. Laughing face emojis, scrunched eyes with tears coming out <laughs> sideways. <laughs> Thank you, Kyle. Amazing. We're looking forward to that. We well, ain't going to forget it. Mm. I appreciate it. And you're right, Joelle, he nice. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to Joelle, Friday. Shout out to Joelle. He's black. <laughs> nice, Joelle. <laughs> Gen C bought five coffees. <laughs> Snoop Dogg's supporting the Great White Hope now. See what happens when you stop smoking pot. <laughs> Grinning face emoji. People waking up. Yeah, I heard that Snoop Dogg was supporting the Great White Hope. I told you, observe the Great White Hope, Donald Trump. There is magic in them, their heel, heels. Amazing. Thank you. Old Saucy and Canadian David over on Rumble say, Joel Friday needs a Rumbo channel. You got to know how to rumble. Indeed. <laughs> uh, uh, punch, get out that tree before you fall, bought a coffee. <laughs> I'm running out of time, so I got to pick a, put you on the hot seat. I need to, to answer these questions as quickly as possible. <laughs> Cherry emoji, fire emoji. One, does everyone with an ego have anger? 100%. Ego is anger. Anger is ego. Ego is fear, and fear is ego. Two, yes or no? Which is the nature of the devil. Do you have an ego? It's dying daily. It's dying daily, absolutely. Three, yes or no, do you have anger? No, zero. That was amazing. Thank you for coming on, Jesse. Tell the folks how to get your (laughs) website, your book, or anything else you would like to give out. That's on thefallestate.tv. Thank you. (laughs) Uh, Oh, funny. Yeah. Imam, Iman, sorry, not Imam, Iman from the Netherlands bought five coffees. Hey, Jesse, what's wrong with the Mexicans at the border? What the? Shout out to you and your crew. I wanted to ask, ask, I ask, ask how much did Thomas Sowell inspire you and are you familiar with him and his work? I am very familiar with him. I wasn't inspired, but I do agree with what he's talk about and. I, 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 it would have been nice if a lot of black people had known about Thomas Sowell. It would have been amazing. And Walter Williams and all those guys. Walter Williams on my board until he aspired. So, right on. Thank you. Gotta love his ideas. I was first introduced to the idea there is no racism through him when I was 18. I'm 39 now. Uh, nice. Shout out to the fallen state, he says. Um, God bless you all. Greetings from the Netherlands around the world and their mama. By the way, can you give out your best Mommy Africa? Laughing face emoji with tears. <laughs> Sideways. Mommy Africa. We got to go to Mommy Africa. Amazing. You're an old chills monthly rum- rumble supporter, subscriber. You got to know how to rumble. Tony and Russ in the same day? Like, 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 like Jason going to be next. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Shout Let's out. stop there. I want to okay. get some calls in, and we'll fi- remember when you stop. Thank Okey you all. Dokey. So much. I appreciate it. 
Let me go to a first-time caller out of California, Stacy. This one line open, 888-7753-773. Stacy, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hello? Hey, Stacy. Hey, Jesse. I'm from Texas, not California. Oh, okay. <laughs> they, they made a mistake here. They said California. Okay, from yeah, Texas. Texas. <laughs> yes, and I just wanted to answer the biblical question. Are you afraid you're not going to make it? No, I, I don't even think about that anymore. Prior to waking up, as you say, uh, I used to all the time think about things like that. But now that um, uh, I, I've changed, it kind of just went away. Like, I don't think about that. What, However I mean, like how I think what you mean about that, I don't think about that anymore. And why did you think that way before? Um, I had a lot of fear, uh, anger. Um it just stems from, you know, the trauma from childhood, things like that. Uh, I used to think about it all the time. Um, so, yeah, it would just come like just all this. I would just I could be doing dishes, whatever. It just it'd pop up in my mind all the time. Amazing. I, w- yeah. I really want to respond to that, but I got to hold it until Sunday. But it's very <laughs> interesting to respond. I appreciate it. Yeah. Stacy, what do you think about the great white hope, Donald Trump? Oh, I love him. I know that he, uh, God is working through him, and um, people are intimidated by truth. And uh, they, you know, because what Trump is doing reminds them of their hell inside, and they don't like to be called out. And, uh, you know, his past, everyone has a past. So that's what they focus on more than the good that he's doing and the fact that I really do think that God is leading him or guiding him in the direction he's exposing the evil that's there right that's really what's happening amazing yeah and i'm mexican imagine that she mexican amazing well stacy i really appreciate you uh your response to the biblical question and again, yeah. I'll put my two cents in on Sunday. Stay with it. Stay with it. Working on you. Never stop working on you. You haven't no, seen anything yet. <laughs> yeah, I, I, uh, I, I believe you. I do. I see that every day. <laughs> right on. Uh-huh. Take care. All Call right. me again. Thank you. Bye bye. Right. Bye now. Amazing. Eight 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 seven seven five three seven seven three. Let me go to Nick. Out of New York. Nick, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hey, Jesse. How you doing, buddy? All is well. Um, I, don't, I, I don't have a lot of time, so I'm going to ask, ask these questions, and I might have to get off. Okay. A um, couple questions. Number one, um, in, in Trump's first, when he was first running, he ran on the, the, the slogan, lock her up, lock her up, lock her up. Right after he got elected, he had a luncheon, and he honored Bill and Hillary Clinton. That's number one. I wanted your response. Is God really working through him if he's pushing this bioweapon? I, I would encourage you to have a little space there so you can see for yourself and watch how he deal with the issues of, that are in his life. And uh, you will see for yourself is if he's set by God or not. But according to Bill O'Reilly's book, Trump tried to get an investigation on Hillary but the White House counsel stopped it because it looked political. Okay. That's according to Bill O'Reilly, I, I believe. I may be a little wrong about that. Okay. All right. I'm sorry, Jesse. I, I, I'm okay. going to phone you back at some other time. Right um, on. The whole, the, um, I really appreciate what you're doing, and uh, thank you so much. You're Bye-bye. welcome, buddy. Nice call. Amazing. 888-775-3. Momo, Momo is out of uh, Washington, D.C. Momo, welcome to the show. You're on the air. And how you doing, Jesse? All is well. I seen that you were mad at uh, Ilhan Omar yesterday. Of what? Ilhan Omar. You say, you see that of what? You was mad at Ilhan Omar yesterday? No, I wasn't. I'm not mad at her. She just shouldn't be in our government because she is a well, foreigner. Why? Why do you think so? She's a refugee, and she hates America. 
how about the Israelis that have dual citizenship? I'm Somali-like her, so that's why I'm coming to the defense. You coming to her defense? Yeah, how about this? Really Even if she's wrong, defense. you still come to her defense? I agree. If somebody doesn't have best interests of the government in mind, they shouldn't be there. And does she have the best interests of America? Nope. She has her country first. Right. So should she be in our government? No, I agree with you on that. But how about what I'm trying to tell you? The people funded by APAC, the Jewish lobby, the Israelis with dual citizenship. How about them people? They shouldn't be in our government. Uh, that's what I'm saying. They should be held to the same accountability. I said they should not be in... Foreigners should not be allowed... And when I become president, I will change that. So don't worry, okay? But foreigners should not be involved in American government, meaning that they shouldn't be running it. They can vote if they want to, but they should not because they have the same mindset that they had from the country that they grew up in, and they would bring those things here. And so I, I'm just not a big fan. I interviewed a black guy on my show, to, on my father's state the other day, and he's, uh, I believe he said he was born here, but his parents came from another country. And I just don't think foreigners should run our government. Did you know 84 Congress members have uh, dual Israel citizenship? Are we having the same conversation? What did you say about that? <laughs> uh, it looked like we had yeah. two different conversations. You brought up one thing, and you mm-hmm. tricked me and went to something else instead of no, going to that. My and, bad. What did you say? Uh, it sounds like we're having two different conversations. Repeat it for me one more time. You keep bringing up something about dual ship, people have dual citizenship or something like that. And my no, thing but, is Ilion Omar or any foreigner, male or female, should not be allowed to r- run our government. They shouldn't be congressmen and 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 senators, and they shouldn't be running our police departments and things like that because they have s-hole ideas from their s-hole countries. How about the ones that don't have uh, America first at heart? That's fine. And law of the American born citizen, we don't have to always agree, but at least be a citizen of America. Because there are a lot of Republicans, to be honest with you, Momo. There are a lot of American citizens, Republicans, that don't have America at, at, their, at heart. They're about themselves. And they're born and raised, they're born and raised here like me, too. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah, it is. It's insane, but that's good and evil. Momo, call me again. I got to take a break, all right? All right, buddy. All right, buddy. I gotta take a break. One more hour to go. Hake is coming in with hate news, not the fake news, and I'll be back in a moment. Steve, thank you for calling and thanks for holding. How have you been helped by the show? I'm gonna tell you this. I believe you might go down in history as one of the greatest, if not the greatest, black man that ever lived on planet Earth, as far as I'm concerned. I don't know anybody before you that's been that great. You know, freeing the slaves is one thing, but you've been freeing people of their mind, which matters, it should be anyhow, to you more than anything else, because with the mind not being right, there ain't nothing else going to happen right anyway. If you can doubt every thought, because you're not your thoughts, if you can doubt every thought, knowing that you're not your thoughts, you don't create them, they're not from God, that they're from the deceiver, the great deceiver, Satan, If you can doubt every thought, you can be free, just like that. At an instant, bring every thought into captivity. It's so amazing. This is the end of hour two already of Country and Western Tuesday. It is... uh, JLP will be right back, guys. Whole lot of mess going on in the world. Insanely expensive Super Bowl tickets. By the way, their uh, lines are full, guys. 
JLP will be right back to your calls. But first, fake news. Now, fake news. Kami Nonsense Network CNN says the average ticket price for the upcoming so-called Super Bowl matchup between Kansas City Chiefs and San Francisco 49ers is $9,800, $9,800, according to TickPick, T-I-C-K-P-I-C-K. These staggering prices will make the February 11th game the most expensive so-called Super Bowl on record. And your money's worth less than ever, too. Joni Mitchell is 80. She's going to perform at the Grammys for the first time. She's supposedly a legendary singer-songwriter. I've heard of her. And that's on this Sunday. We're probably going to skip that, too. Neuralink. Yay! Far-left females at the Skim Report. Er, you, Elon Musk says his company, Neuralink... N-E-U-R-A-L-I-N-K, has implanted a brain chip in a human being. Last year, Musk's startup got the FDA's approval to test Neuralink brain implants on humans. The uh, device aims to help people with disabilities, so-called handicaps, control computers and communicate only by using their thoughts. During the animal testing, the advice allowed a monkey to play a computer game with their brain making all the moves. Wow. Now Elon Musk says Neuralink's first human patient received the implant on Sunday and is recovering well. Elon Musk says the results show promising neuron spike detection, suggesting the device is already gathering information from the patient's brain. Still, it could be months before the public team learns whether the device is fully working as intended. For now, Neuralink is focused on analyzing the device's safety with its human trial. It comes as the uh, company has faced criticism in the past for its animal testing and is reportedly uh, faulty business practices at its facilities in California and Texas. For years, scientists have worked on creating brain-computer interfaces. Now Elon Musk's company could be one step closer to making that tech a reality and changing how people communicate. Uh, Harvard is dealing with a civil rights lawsuit from the Muslims and Palestinians. Federal so-called civil rights complaint filed Monday against Harvard University, according to the Kami Nonsense Network, CNN, on behalf of Muslim and Palestinian students who claim, without citing evidence, maybe, that the school failed to protect them from harassment and intimidation. Uh, The complaint, so they let them into the school and then they get sued. What a mess. The complaint alleges students faced rampant harassment and racist attacks, including doxing, stalking, an assault simply for being Palestinian Muslim and supporters of so-called Palestinian rights. Harvard declined to comment. Also on Monday, the CARE, far-left extremist CARE, Council on American Islamic Relations, said, C-A-I-R, said the United States has experienced a relentless wave of anti-Muslim and anti-Palestinian hate since the October 7th Hamas attack on Israel. The hate goes both ways, buddies. The organization said they received more than 3,500 complaints of bias and discrimination from victim-minded people from October to December 2023. The return of bullfighting was met by protests in Mexico City. Uh, Animal rights activists recently took to the streets of Mexico City to protest the return of bullfighting to the capital of Mexico after almost two years. And gas, meanwhile, in America, gas stoves mess. The Department of Energy says that the vast majority of gas stoves on the market meet President Biden's Crooked Joe, his new if energy efficiency standards. In other words, gas stoves will not be banned in the United States anytime soon. This comes after a Biden administration official set off a firestorm uh, a year ago when he suggested Consumer Product Safety Commission could ban gas stoves because they'd been linked to childhood asthma. Remember that thing where you can't breathe? Uh, however, the agency this week said 97% of gas stoves already meet the new standards that aim to decrease harmful carbon dioxide emissions. At least 77% of smooth top electric, electric ranges already meet the new standards as well. I'm James Hake. Now back to JLP, Hour 3. Stand up strong, take the truth about themselves. 
to understand what went wrong. I know we can find a way. I know we can find a way. I know we can find a way. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Uniting the races with truth instead of dividing them with lies. We're also rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man. I am Jesse Lee Peterson. Welcome to the third hour of the show today. You can get involved by calling 888-7753-773-888-77 Jesse. J-E-S-S-E. My biblical question for today, are you afraid you're not going to make it? Are you afraid, afraid you're not going to make it? We have every way that you can watch and support the show listed on jessaleepeterson.com slash show. jessaleepeterson.com slash show. And don't forget to, uh, if you're busy and you cannot sit and watch the show, of course you can podcast, but let's say you can't sit and watch it and you still like to be listening to it though, go to, I mean, uh, call 641-793-1500, 641-793-1500 on your iPhone or iPad, all right? And you can podcast as well. Follow us on social media, uh, JLP Talk on X, and Jesse Lee Peterson on Instagram. Like, follow, ring the bell, subscribe, and I appreciate it. Also, to donate and have your comments read out loud, go to buymeacoffee.com slash JLP Talk. Buymeacoffee.com slash JLP Talk or... Rebuilding the man dot com. Rebuilding the man. It's Tuesday. It's the third hour of the show today. Every Tuesday is country and western Tuesday. Bring back. Bring back. Oh, bring, bring back my country to me. Bring back, bring back, bring back my country to What dog? <laughs> Who let the dogs out? <laughs> Amazing. 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 <laughs> Amazing. Who let the dogs out? I want my country back. I want it back. So let me just say to the callers, is Bill ready? He is, yeah. Okay. Let me say to the callers, we're going to get to all your calls. I, I will. Don't worry. Uh, this is the last Tuesday of the month, and y'all know that every last Tuesday of the month, we have your friend, my friend, God's friend, of Our Part Church of Christ and uh, teacher. He's a busy man at Wichita Christian School. Bill. Good morning, Jesse. How are you today? All is well. Happy New Year. Hey, thank you. Same to you. Good to, good to be with you this new year. Thank you, man. You look well. Well, that, well thank you for that. <laughs> well, you look great on that purple background. That looks great. That's amazing. Thank yeah. you, Bill. <laughs> Uh, do you make those resolution things? No. Oh, nice. 
No, I, I, I mean, I actually uh, think about uh, preaching and I try to improve. Uh, I think about what I need to do to improve uh, presentation and that kind of thing and Bible studies and make them make them a little bit more palatable or, uh, you know, to follow with for people. But I, I, I try to improve my preaching on that and right try on. to improve my Bible study. Yeah. Nice. Uh, Bill, it's a mess in my country today. It is. It's terrible. What a mess. Yeah. Can you tell us who is right in this fight? Who's right? Yes. <laughs> well, you know what? Uh, I, I believe that Christians are right. And this, number one, the country was founded upon God in the sense that it was uh, founded upon God-given principles of liberty. But uh, we have now a secular humanist nation and uh, so even though there are many people who are Christians and who are believers in the Bible and believers in God, uh, the universities and the media and the, uh, the military industrial complex and every, everything, the universities, they have all completely been taken over by secular humanism yeah. and uh, DEI, Marxism. So we are fighting an uphill battle because we're fighting the, the establishment, so to speak. Amazing. I, um, I want to ask, you mentioned church, uh, Christians and, and government. Shook, two questions. Is there such a thing as... Church and state should not be one or something like that. There should be a division between church and state. Right. You heard that before, right? Right. Well, that's 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 one of the fundamental principles of our nation that the church and that the church is not to be c controlled by the state. So <clears throat> that's the First Amendment, and so that is where many, many, many millions of people are confused, and they're confused because. They miss teaching by professorships at universities. So the idea is not to separate God from the state. The idea is not to separate Christian principles from the state. The idea was that the state should not be controlling the church and should not be paying the coffers of the preachers in the different churches. So they did not want control of the churches by the state, nor did they want the control, the governmental control of the of the state by a Roman Catholic organization, which is the country from which we fled. The Roman Church, the Roman Catholic Church, wedded to the state, controlled the state actors. And so our founding fathers did not want that, but that was that was the unification of the political uh, the political unification of church and the state. So they did not want that. That, however, has nothing at all to do with the ideas that the Founding Fathers set forward, and that is that the principles of the Bible are the fundamental principles of our nation. God and our rights come from God, and that we have the right to change or alter the government if it becomes abusive of the rights that God gave us. Those are fundamental principles, life, liberty, and property. Those are principles that the Bible teaches that were laid out in the foundation of our country, and all of the founding fathers said so. But that has nothing to do with whether the, the church is controlling the state in a political sense or the, the state is controlling the church in a political sense. It has nothing to do with that at all. Amazing. And the second part to that, there are a lot of Christians who believe that they should not be involved in government. Right. And what do you say to that? They're, they're, they're absolutely wrong. Yeah. It's a, it's a world view. So the Bible teaches a world view, and that world view breaks down into the, the, that the country, uh, that the, the world is controlled by God and his providence, that the nations that have been founded are under his control, and it is our responsibility. It's not simply an idea. It's our responsibility to impact the world about us with the gospel of Christ. And that means also through the political system. Politics or the political system is simply the outworking of what is taking place in the nation. It's simply the outworking of the principles that we understand at a national and a state and a local level. So the issue is, what principles are guiding the local government? 
What principles are guiding the state government? What principles are guiding the national government? And should Christians influence those principles? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Unless yeah. we want to have a, a country such as is controlled by Islam, which tells you that you're going to be a Muslim or you're going to lose your head. And that's <laughs> uh, that's the way it's going to go. Amazing. Yeah. It's, it's so dumb that a Christian should not be involved with government. I don't know how... Anyone can believe that. I don't know how a Christian believe that because, and I give them, and I'm like, look at what's happening with the government. You're not involved, right? And they're coming up with all kind of crazy laws and rules and regulations, and they're locking the Christians down, and they're like dividing the races. They're doing everything because the Christians have not gotten involved with the government. They won't run for office. They won't run for the police department or anything. It's insane. You know, our founding fathers, in their period, the country was 98% Protestant, what they called Protestant Christian. That would be just a broad uh, usage of the term Christian, of course, but Protestant Christian base. 98% of the country was that way. Yeah. So they wanted those principles of the Bible to be infused and implanted into the government. And so they went to men such as William Blackstone, who was a jurist in England, who basically tells us exactly the same thing, and that is just using, utilizing Romans 1, for example, the, the book of Romans, chapter 1, that it is when men stray from God that they turn to idolatry and paganism. But this is the first time that we have had in the history of mankind where people have been able to sit down and have a confab and discuss what form of government do we have. And they wanted a, the Christians and people who believe in God to have a voice in what kind of government they're going to live under. Yeah. And so it is, it's insane to su suggest that Christians should not somehow participate in what is going on. Amazing. Is Bill phone ringing or the us? That's not my phone. Uh, if I it thought, is, uh, I thought you were I thought oh, your I friends were calling from Alabama. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. I don't. I only have one friend in Alabama. <laughs> no, no, I just tease. <laughs> no, I think it's on Alabama. Yeah, they're taking it out. So, Bill, um, okay. as you know, uh, Gray Abbott is putting barbed wire around the borders of Texas there to prevent the illegal aliens from coming in. Is uh, my question about that? What, number one, were you surprised when the U.S. Supreme Court agreed that they should take the bot wire down? And, and is Biden really in violation of federal law? So a, a couple of things, two things. Number one, I, I, don't, I believe Joe, Joe Biden is indeed in violation of federal law and has been from day one in the fact that he, he absolutely broke down the borders of the United States, invited the world to come in, which is against the Constitution. The Constitution, a lot of people say the system of immigration is broken. No, it's not broken. They refuse to abide by it. That's what's happening. Yeah. They refuse to obey the law. And his job is to obey the law, to execute the laws that Congress has passed. But we have allowed the Republicans and Democrat presidents for the past 25, 30, 40 years to have executive orders and, uh, and, uh, and signing statements where they refuse to obey the laws that Congress have passed, and we've let them get by with it. So now Joe Biden comes up, says, we're not going to abide by that law. We're going to refuse to do it. We're going to refuse to enforce the laws that are on the books regarding immigration. Consequently, We've let that go. They're trying to impeach now Mayorkas, which, of course, ought to be done. But he's working for Joe Biden. Why don't they impeach Joe Biden on this? Why go after the small fish when you got the big fish right there should be in the frying pan? But instead, uh, Joe Biden has violated the laws of the United States on the immigration. And so uh, that's the first part. The second part of the question, the, the first part is regarding the it's actually razor wire that they've put up. And I thought this was interesting. I think that Texas does have the right to defend our borders. Here's, here's the interesting thing. I, I saw uh, on Fox News, Jonathan Turley, who is, uh, the, of course, the, uh, the, the, cl the classic uh, scholar on the Constitution, say, you know, that 
uh, that Greg Abbott, the governor of Texas, is going to have an uphill climb against the federal government on what he's doing on the border because he says that that's the federal government's job. And I'm going to say to Jonathan Turley and all of those constitutional scholars, the issue is not what does the Constitution say specifically. The issue is what does a state, what recourse does a state have when the federal government goes to war with that state and refuses to do its job and instead not only refuses to do its job, but invites foreign armies into the state to invade that state and destroy that state. What recourse does a state have? That's the issue. Yeah, yeah. So it's not like, what what principle of the Constitution am I going to go to here? And Greg Abbott saying, okay, we do have constitutional principles that we can defend the state, but that's really not the issue. It's the same thing regarding uh, state secession. I'm going to say this. I, I got into a, a debate. Uh, in kind of a writing debate with one of our state representatives. His name is James Frank. And uh, so I, I pointed out that free people have the right to secede from the union. If we're free, we have a right to secede when there are abuses of the government against the people, just as our Declaration of Independence reads. If we're free, yeah. we have a right to secede. Well, he came back and he said at a Tea Party meeting, well, I'm going to ask my scholars uh, and the, uh, on the Constitution, where in the Constitution we have a right to secede. You know, I, wanted, I laughed out loud. I said, look, this has nothing to do with what is stated in the Constitution. This has whether I have rights before God, yes or no. Yeah. And the Constitution was framed on the assumption that I have rights before God, and I'm going to give some of those rights to the federal government to protect me under the understanding that it's a compact. And when the federal government refuses to obey the law and refuses to uphold their portion of the contract, it is our right before God to take the law into our own hands in the, sta in the state sense and protect ourselves. That's the issue. And if I wanted, and if the state of Texas wants to secede, we have the right to do that yeah. because the federal government is at war. This is not simply uh, falling down on the job, and Joe Biden doesn't really <laughs> uphold us into the bargain. No, they're at war yeah. with the state of Texas and America, and that's what's happening. It's amazing, too, and you're right when you say they just refuse to enforce the law. They're not doing it at all. They refuse right. to do it, and it looked like something should have been done or could be done about that, but they're letting the people get away with it. Joe Biden and his administration get away with that and just— I know it's well, wrong. They, they, they've, done, they've done more than simply drop the ball, Jesse. They have invited people from third world countries coming over here in mass yes. to change this nation and destroy the constitutional republic that we have. And they're doing a great job of it. And do, does a state and do free people have a, a recourse? Yes, we do. Amazing. And that is before God. So the Constitution is based upon the rights that we have before God, and it is preceded by the Declaration of Independence. And so that is to, that to which I appeal, and I believe Texans should appeal also. I want to say one more thing here. I, I know that uh, this is kind of one of those hot-button issues, and I kind of get going here. But, <laughs> so, Amazing. But, you know, <laughs> but you know what I thought? Tech, uh, Greg Abbott, the governor of Texas, he said, you know what? He's invited people to come down volunteering to come to the border and assist in the in the in the border protection. And I don't know what way he would plug people in volunteers to do that. But and I would say I would love to do that. However, we are living under a socialistic style nation in which we are working people that are working two and three jobs all the time in order to pay for people who are coming over here giving them money, and redistributing our wealth. So since we have become so strapped and we're working two or three jobs, we can't go down and do that. Right. We have very little time to go protest. The people who go out and protest are the ones who don't have jobs, and they're paid for by my job. <laughs> so they're going out to protest and walking around with signs, and they travel around the country and say, we protest what's going on against the conservatives, against Donald Trump. Well, you know, I'm paying for their meal ticket. Yeah. And that's what's happening. And it's and it's ridiculous. So the socialistic system is working against this also. Amazing, man. Good point. Uh, last night, uh, and 
I, I don't know if you're even aware of this or not, but I was watching uh, Jesse Waters' show there on Fox, and he was showing that so, someone had gone out, two white guys, two brothers, had gone out and done this documentary on the illegal alien. They had kind of just infiltrated and were a part of the whole thing. And they show where, in, I believe it was China or Japan, I think China, uh, that the Red Cross and other nonprofit organizations are assisting the people in coming to our country. They are, they're setting up rest areas, they're giving them maps as to how to get yep. here and what to do and all that. Does the, um, by law or just, does the Red Cross or any nonprofit organization has the right, have the right to assist illegal aliens how to come into our country and break the law like that? No, I don't believe so. I, I, I don't believe so. But when you have a president who continues to break, and the Democratic Party has been doing this, Obama did it too, and this has just been going on for a long time. But when you have a Democratic Party that consistently breaks the law regarding immigration, you know, the DACA program that Obama got going, that was a that was a violation of law. And so also was the the Fast and Furious program that he got going to try to to try to scuttle the Second Amendment in our nation. You know, he got that going, put the gun running operation member down to Mexico. But when you have presidents and administrations that are flagrantly violating the law and inviting foreign armies into the state of Texas, into the state of Arizona to change our nation and destroy our people and destroy our culture, then there are a lot of there are a lot of organizations that are going to jump on the bandwagon and probably, you know, they're hardwired into the Democratic Party, such as the Red Cross. Uh, and I'll say this, the Catholic Church has done the same thing. The yeah. Catholic Church, they have they've harbored illegals. They have uh, protected them, the Democratic governors of different states, and they've done the same thing uh, regarding uh, and mayors of, of Democratic cities, such as Chicago, New York. They've wanted to have sanctuary cities, and they have violated the federal law. And that's they're doing that purposefully. So now then they, they cry uncle when Greg Abbott sends illegal aliens up there. And so when they go up to, you know, uh, where Obama lives in Martha's Vineyard, they don't like that. No, no, they, they're a sanctuary area and sanctuary city. But no, they, they're not so sanctuary. They got rid of them. They said, well, take them to your sanctuary city. Yeah. We don't want them here. <laughs> and it's just it's just a hypocrisy gone to seed. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Um, I don't, do you know when the Supreme Court decided or agreed, decided that they were going to that Joe Biden can take down the wires in Texas there. Do you, did they, was there some law they used to say that was right or okay? Or what made them go that way, you think? Well, my under, okay, I, I have two thoughts on that. I, my understanding is that they're th saying, okay, this is uh, constitutionally the responsibility given to the federal government. That's number one. But number two, I believe that they are completely under pressure. Number uh, First of all, they're under a lot of pressure to go that direction because, after all, we have a lot of organizations, Islamic organizations, for example, in this nation, who are pressured, pressuring the people. Well, for, for example, this, the, the Supreme Court justices, remember when they were, they were ransacked their houses yeah. and they protested outside of them? Our government's job is to protect those people, but they refuse to do it. They yeah. did not want to protect them. They want them to be held hostage to the masses of people. So I believe that Amy Coney Barrett and others probably think, you know what? Well, they're going to be coming to my house <laughs> and they're going to be destroying my property and threatening my family because Joe Biden wants it that way. The Democratic Party wants the Supreme Court to be held hostage to the masses of people in a communistic style nation. So now you have a Supreme Court that, OK, who knows whether they're going to be trying to, to decide uh, constitutionally or not. And who knows whether they're going to be thinking through it rationally or not, because now they're they're under pressure 
from the masses of people, communistic style, to do what the what the Democratic Party wants them to do. So, so now I don't have any confidence in the Supreme Court. And I'll tell you another thing. When you have the Katanji Brown Jacksons who say, I don't know what a, ma- a woman is or a man is. OK, well, you know what? What's she doing on the Supreme Court? I know. Well, she's, she's there because she's fulfilling a, a DEI uh, inclusion yeah. idea. And that's yeah. the only reason she's there. That's amazing. I, I took a flight a week or two ago now and I'm sitting there. And when they close the, the doors, everybody on, they close the door. I look up and there's a black female pilot, so-called pilot, standing there at the pilot door. And I, I'm like, what the? What the? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so I asked the, the, the little stewardess running up and down the aisle, Is there, is, we, do we have a black female pilot today? And she's like, yes, what's wrong with that? I'm like, she's part of the DEI uh Black thing. She don't know what she's doing. And then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and then uh, I saw a white male pilot going to, in the, to the cockpit. I'm like, wow, I feel better now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? The, the truth is, and people refuse in our nation to look it in the eye. Because we're, we're so politically correct. Well, what's wrong with that? That stewardess would say. Well, you know what? I knew uh, I, I knew several instructor pilots in the past uh, twenty five years. Instructor pilots at Air Force bases, and they tell the same story. And that is, when a female pilot comes into the into the training pilot training, you can red flag as an instructor pilot. You can you can red flag that would be of course mar- given bad marks for any pilot that's flying except except you cannot red flag a female pilot unless you're ready to answer to the base commander. Now why was that the case? Because the political pressure has been so intense to get females in the cockpit. So that's that was the story there. And that's exactly what, matter of fact, Robert Bork writes about that in his book, Slouching Towards Gomorrah. They had a, a crash, a, a, a Navy jet crashed on the deck uh, at California coming in to land. And he pointed out that she had been passed, a woman pilot, been passed over and again simply because the political pressure was so great, so great to get a female pilot in the cockpit. But she was not qualified. She was. She did not have to meet the same standards as some of the other Amazing. pilots. So, but they put her in there anyway because we've got to say we've got female pilots. We've got to say we've got black female pilots. We've got to say this, and so we lower the standards just like they do in the military. They lower the standards to get them in there. Yeah, and so you're, they're not going to be the same. But we've got to be able to say, well, we're, we're meeting the DEI. The diversity, equity, inclusion, the Marxist ideals, the same the same thing going on in in colleges and universities. This is exactly what the entire program has been about. You know, you've got to get them in there. So you're going to you're going to change the standards up. You're going to have to have so many blacks. You have to have so many uh, so many uh, Mexicans, so many. You're just going to have to have it that way. If you're in Arizona, you're going to have so many American Indians. They have to come into the graduate department. Do they have the same standards? No, they don't. They, you might have to. Some of the American Indians have come into graduate programs in psychology department at Arizona State University with a 1.5 grade point average, Amazing. and they get admitted into graduate program. And there are 400 white males with 4.0 averages that are excluded from that program that admits only 20. Why is that? Because we got to have diversity, equity, inclusion. That's been going on for 30, 40 years. Bill, Bill, let me just hold you for a minute. When I come back, I want you to give out your information and all that, how to folk and get it. Sure, that'd be great. Let me take a quick break. Back in a moment, 888-7753-773. Back in a moment. Check out my book, For Rage to Responsibility. I show you how I was able to overcome anger. The spirit of anger was taken away from me. I had it. 
And as a result of having anger, I was insecure. I had doubt, worry, fear. I was in a fallen state and didn't know it. And it wasn't until I went and forgave my mother who tried to turn me away from my father. I forgave my father for not being there and returned back to him. My spirit connected with his spirit and through him, I was able to return to God. And I have perfect peace. Perfect love cast out anger. And when anger is gone, fear and doubt, worry, insecurity, suicidal thoughts, all of that is gone. And you are free. Amazon.com, Barnes & Noble. Or if you want an autographed copy, you can go to my website at rebuildingtheman.com or call 800-411-BOND. Welcome back. Bill Lockwood is here. And Bill is, uh, um, uh, you can find Bill at American Liberty, uh, American Liberty at BillLockwood.com. Patriotic Pulpit Podcast, Bible Studies with Bill Lockwood on YouTube or at Our Park COC, Church of God in Christ. Dot org, But he's going to give that out a little bit more, uh, make it even clearer, because I want y'all to, to support Bill. But for now, I forgot to mention the treasure chest is now open on D-Live. Uh! So, Bill. Yes, sir. I know we uh, let you know Trump personally. I don't think anybody really know who Donald Trump is going to pick for vice president. But who do you think Donald Trump, the, the great white hope, may pick? As VP. Okay, th thank you, Jesse. You know what? I was going to make one correction on the uh, the Iowa. It's Iowa Park Church of Christ. So it's Iowa Park C-O-C dot org. It's not Church of God in Christ. It's just Church of Christ. So it's Iowa Park C-O-C dot org. Oh, okay, yeah, that's yeah, the idea. It, yeah, that's anyway. I but, no, I'm glad. But Be yeah, before you get into the coming, get the folks how they can help you, your websites, and whatever you want to put out there. Let's do that now, so we won't feel rushed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Thank you for that. Well, well, I do have a website. It's American Liberty with Bill Lockwood, and there's a donate button on there. It is it is not active in the sense that I have uh, articles being posted on there, but I do have a donate button, American Liberty with Bill Lockwood, and you can donate uh, to the program or in all the work that I do. So the the podcast is now called Patriotic Pulpit. Patriotic Pulpit is patrioticpulpit.com. Um, but you can find that on, uh, on Patriotic Pulpit. You can find it on Spotify and uh, Amazon Music app, Patriotic Pulpit. And then you can just put my name in, Bill Lockwood. And then uh, I have also on YouTube is Bible Studies with Bill Lockwood. Uh, that comes out of the Iowa Park Church of Christ. And so I have, uh, I preach every Sunday, as you know, on that teach Bible class and that, and that, that sort of thing. So we just started the book of Romans. So I have uh, I have a lot of material on Romans that we're doing right now in the pulpit. So those th that's how you can get to my material. Nice. Uh, who do you think the great white hope Donald Trump would pick as VP? You know, I, I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure really. I've, I've speculated on that myself. I, I like Carrie Lake myself. I, I think uh, Carrie Lake is a great, a great woman. She's a great fighter. Um, I, I don't know, I, but I'm not sure. Uh, really, that's just one of them. I I prefer her, but um, I'm not I'm not certain really. 
no. who, he, who he might choose. And I, I guess he's at one point talked about, and I, I like Vivek Ramaswamy. Also, uh, Vivek Ramaswamy, um, someone pointed out to me, well, he's not a Christian. Well, you know what? I'm going to say this, that that is true. But I'll, here's something else. We, when we were in World War II, we were not asking whether the, <laughs> whether the commanding officers were Christians. You know, General right. Patton was certainly not a Christian, and neither was General Douglas MacArthur. And in a normal situation such as the country was founded upon and everything's running more or less smoothly in the sense that, of course, we, the people were fighting back and forth and arguing, but when everybody was basically on the same page— that our country has God-given rights, then okay, that might be the case. But we are now at war, and that we are at war with Marxism and with uh, with co- communism, and that's what's going on, and it's supported by the Democratic Party. We're at war with Islam. It's, the Islamic nations are uh, charging after us also. Yeah. So, so I think at this point we need someone in there who knows the score and knows how to do it, Donald Trump. And I like Vivek Ramaswamy, t- myself. Amazing. Bill, before I let you go, then I do have to let you go. I want to tell you something about the blacks. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. I've often said for years now, because the blacks are not the way they used to be when I was growing up. They were more independent. They thought and did for themselves. They didn't have physical leaders and things like that. They only had God leading them. And that all changed when the civil rights movement happened. And I've said that the civil rights movement was the worst thing other than abortion that has ever happened to the blacks. And so I and 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 as a result, I've been telling my country that the blacks should not be in leadership. They should not be running the government. They should not be running things because all they do is destroy. They never make it better. And there's nowhere in this country where uh, blacks are in control, neighborhoods or anywhere where blacks are in control and you want to go and live there, right? It's all hood. They don't make it better. Well, I saw this report on, uh, I believe it was Harvard, about Harvard, Harvard Law University. And it was founded by white men Mm -hmm, way back then. And it was very prominent school. It was so amazing that when they had to, I guess the Civil War, one of those wars, they sent all the students home and they housed the soldiers at Harvard. Mm-hmm. And it was, and, and, and the white men who founded Harvard were on the board and they, they worked at the school as well. And then, so for years, Harvard was an amazing school. And guess what happened, Bill? Yeah. They got a black female president and she destroyed it. Yeah. Well, you, you mean talking about Claudine Gay? Yeah, she destroyed the school. Yeah, well, there's, I think the school was destroyed before that, actually. You, you she think just, so? She, she just put the cherry on top on that one. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, you know what? The, the Harvard universities and the Yales and so forth, they were all founded as as actually preacher training schools, yeah. people to teach theology. And they were founded upon the same principles that a country was founded upon, and they were putting out people that were in the pulpits of America and teaching God-given rights, and their nation was founded upon God, then they were all that way. All of those Ivy League schools were founded as Christian schools, so-called Christian schools. And right. they had they taught theology, and they were teaching Bible classes, and they had, had rigorous training. And those guys that came out of there in those days were all Christian-oriented in their worldview. But that has long since been changed, right? You're right about that. And so you're saying that prior to this black female becoming president, it was already on its way down, and she just finished it off. Oh, abs- yeah, absolutely. Oh, Amazing. absolutely. The, these, yeah, these Ivy League colleges, yeah, they're they're absolutely gone. They're teaching. They're teaching uh, Marxism. And, matter of fact, I have a I have a book in my library here. Um, Trying to think of the man's name, but uh, he's he's one of the uh, one of the chaplains in a he's a secular humanist teacher there, and he's and he argues in the book against God, against the Bible, and he's a chaplain there, <laughs> uh, paid for at, at Harvard University. It's just you know, so I read that book. Matter of fact, I I was going to review that book with you. I think 
about five or six years ago. But anyway, but that's the kind of stuff that they've been putting out for many, many years. Amazing. What a mess. In, yeah. in closing, Bill, and then I kind of got to run here. What will it take? Well, what will it take to turn America back to that? Yeah, I, I think we're going to have to have, number one, large-scale repentance and turning to God. And if we don't, then we don't, we're, not, we're cooked. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bill, give out your website and all your, uh, everything again. Yeah, thank you so much, Jesse. Well, it's yeah. a Patriotic Pulpit. You can find that on a Spotify app as well as Amazon Music, and you can find it. On, I'm, I'm on YouTube also. There are clips of me on YouTube, uh, Patriotic Pulpit. That's the podcast that I do. And then also uh, uh, Bible Studies with Bill Lockwood. That's uh, the sermons that I preach, and you can find those on YouTube as well. Uh, the church is Iowa Park Church of Christ, so it's Iowa Park C-O-C, uh, dot org. And, you know, I, I, I say Iowa Park, but, you know, if you're from Iowa Park, they say Iowa Park. So uh, yeah. so uh, I'm a, not a native, of, but, but anyway, I've been there about 15, 17 years, something like that in, at the church there. Amazing. One yeah. quick answer to this question. This okay. is from Forbes.com. Donald, Donald Trump claimed, claimed there was a 100% chance of a terrorist incident because of the increasing number of people entering the country illegally. What do you say to that? Yeah, uh, 100% chance of, of a, a, of a ter terrorist. Terrorist incident because of he, so many people coming into our country. Illegally. And he's, he's, he's predicting what's going to happen in the future here. Yes. Yeah, I, I think he's right. I mean, he's absolutely right. We've, we, Joe Biden has let 10 million people in here. What in the world? What are we thinking to allow him to sit in that Oval Office? I don't understand. But yeah. Donald Trump is right. Absolutely right. That's why I support Donald Trump. Amazing. Me too. Yeah. The great white hope. Bill, That's right. Thank you so much, man. It was good having you back. And we'll see you again soon. All right, Lord bless you, Jesse. Thank you so much. You too. Say hello to the family for me. Will do. Okay, Jesse. Take care. Have a good day. All right, buddy. Amazing. Bye, -bye. Bye now. Bill Lockwood, folks. 888-7753. Let, let me go to Stacy, a first time call out of California. Stacy, welcome to the show. You you're on the air. Okay, okay so you're asking the biblical question. Yes. What? Uh what? I mean, are you afraid you're not going to make it? Okay, can I answer it? Yes. Okay, my my spirit say, am I going to make the the, uh, the journey through this journey that the Father has laid before me? And so He brings forth the vision that He brought to me. You say to Mom. Do the work, but allow it to just happen. Now, what are you allowing it to happen when you get up early in the morning and you get up and you're doing yourself? That is not the father doing you. That's you doing you, right? Uh, no, I, I said allow life to happen, but you got to work oh, on okay. yourself. Okay. Yeah, you got to work on yourself, but you just allow life to happen. Don't try to make it happen. You can't make anything happen. Okay, so what about the um, another one? Um, like I was listening to the girl that um, that was crying. She reminds me so much of myself. I cry, 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 cry. Jason, cry because, Jason well, do me a favor. Hold on. Your phone. Don't hang up now. Your phone is not really clear. I'm not clearly understanding what you're saying. Let me go to uh, Ken out of Georgia. He's been waiting a long time here. Um, let me see. Ken, thank you for calling. Thank yes, for holding you on the air. Yes, sir. Hey, that, that brother uh, Lockwood, man, he was on, man. One of the smartest on. white men on this side of heaven. Yeah, man. <laughs> uh -oh. Uh -oh. Hey, um, and to answer your, your biblical question. Are you uh, afraid you're not going to make it? No, I'm not afraid. I'm I'm going to make it. Because of one thing that I believe, that the kingdom of God is in me. And if I say that I ain't going to make it, that, that's, saying, that's like saying, 
the kingdom of God is not going to make it. And I know that's not true. That's amazing. Thank you, Ken. I appreciate it. I put my little two cents in on Sunday. Super Chat. Thank you, Ken. Super Chats. Prep Ham Paul is a monthly subscriber on rumble.com slash Jason. You got to know how to rumble. My lord. People who believe Trump was trying to overthrow the government. Sheep emojis. Five of them. <laughs> I know. <laughs> what the? Flower Power bought a coffee. OMG. Oh, my gosh. Jesse, the biblical question. Are you afraid you're not going to make it? I have been in fear of not making it financially. It's so hard not to worry about money and living in debt. I am stay at home with my kids. I have no control over making more money, and I feel like living in hell worrying about money. I also feel fake not worrying and acting like everything is okay. I'm not angry at hubby, husband, just wondering why did this happen to us? I love God, but does he provide? I'm stressed not having a backup plan. Mom. Amazing, says Flower Power. I really want to respond to that Flower Power, but I can't because it's a biblical question. Um, I put my two cents in on Sunday, but you can call me and we can talk about those other issues you're dealing with. 888-7753-773. Thank you. Stan 69 with a couple of diamonds. Mexicans were the original cowboys in the Old West. The, gu- the guitar originates in Spain, not America. Amazing. <laughs> Thank you. First time chats from Falconing and Rutek Weird. Howdy from Twitch. First time watching. Usually listen. And Falconing says, what the? Over on Twitch.tv. Or no, Twitch.tv, something like that. Twitch.com slash JLP Talk. Thank you. I appreciate it. What? Twitch.tv slash JLP Talk. Shout nice. out to the top contributors on D Live Stan 69, Enoch 87, something, WD41, Misty, and the rest. Thank you guys for the support. I appreciate it. Thank you all. Amazing. Uh, over on uh, that YMH, your mom's house podcast, user King Great at Almost. Says, this man is extremely intelligent, referring to your appearance on your mom's house. Very surprising. I think most of what he says can easily be taken out of context or explained through acceptance of God, which is great for some people. I personally got a lot out of this episode. Makes me want to revisit my relationship with God or my understanding, at least. Amazing. He black. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) Raul Shaba says, jokes aside, a couple months back, I snapped at my mom over the phone. I yelled at all my frustrations to her. (laughs) Nice. Highlighted all wrong things and choices she made for me and her. She had me in Mexico two years into my life. We reunited reunited in the States. She married a man that would end up beating her often. She stayed because it was her only way to guarantee papers for me and her. I grew up scared, not knowing my real dad, always wishing he would show up and somehow save the day. Never happened. I remained a scared child that could not protect his mother from this monster. Later in life, she finally left him, but I still had those feelings balled up, and I couldn't help but feel that it was my, was my mom's fault my life was so hard. In reality, she did the best she could, sacrificed her safety for me. After snapping, months later, I apologized and thanked her for everything. I'm 32, and only now I'm truly happy and anger-free. I'm sure this resonates with a lot of black and Mexican men now. Jesse really made me understand what I went through and how I made it on the other side. I've never heard it being painted like this. Thank you, Jesse, for the enlightenment. You're welcome. Thank you. Piffy, please. <laughs> that was actually a comment from the Your Mom's House episode. Oh, it's but it was, like a letter. But it was not pithy. It was not a pithy comment. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. That's all for now. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Amazing. Let me go to my tooth, my tooth, on uh, the California. My tooth, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Good morning, sir. Good morning. I just want to tell you that ever since I started listening to you, I tell women I don't want to have sex and all that, and they stare at me with evil in their eye, and they, it just doesn't work. Well, I met somebody, and I had my slut maker shirt on when I met her. <laughs> Imagine that. She knew exactly who you were. And, um, and I told her I don't want to have sex, and she's like, okay. And then I, and then I said, hey, it's getting kind of 
serious with us. I said, if we take it to the next level, we'll get real serious. Would you obey me? And without a blink of an eye, Jesse, she looked right at me and said, of course I would. You're my, you, you'd be my man. And I seen something in her, and I was like, wow, I've been searching for something like that my whole life, and I would have never have noticed he, he even, that, man, those are questions. If, if they don't answer those two questions like that, that, that relationship is doomed before it even starts. So I want to tell you, Jesse, thank you, man. And, you're, um, you're welcome. But I want to warn you. Uh, <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> Make sure you number one don't you don't have to tell them that that you are that you're not gonna have sex. You you just show it in your action by not doing it. And then yeah, yeah, I didn't say it right away. I said it, you know, after a while. Right. You know, I just and then yeah, yeah, yeah. and then date her for a while to see if what she said is true. That she will obey you. Don't just jump into a marriage just because <laughs> she said. No, no, no. I know. I just, I, I you know, I'm fine to fast forward because I know we only got a couple seconds here. Right. But uh, uh, I appreciate you and I love you, Jesse and Grandpa. Tell me about the good old days. That's brother. right. Have a good one. Amazing. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. I appreciate it. Yep. Bye, bye. Bye. Uh, disregard. What? Disregard. You got all this? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Vicky. Out of Texas. Vicky, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Good morning, bro. How are you? All is well, Vicky. Amazing. Amazing. I have a question. I spoke with Nick yesterday about the Jean Carroll um, rape against Trump, which is such a farce. Uh, I stand with our brother 100%. Um, this is a witch hunt. I had a question for you. In that discussion with Nick, I told him that I had forgiven my rapist, which I had a truckload of evidence. And last night, our father revealed to me that I had not, even though I'd forgiven them, I had not forgiven my liberal female who sold me out Um I haven't forgiven her. And it's like I realize that I I have to. I have to. And would it be better for me, I mean, just through revelation to realize that I have to, would it be better for me to call her since we left on such horrible terms? Um, first, what do you mean, my rapist? You don't have no rapist. No, not anymore. But I mean, that's the past. I, I know, mean, but it was never your rapist. Don't ever claim that it was your rapist. Maybe you know somebody who raped you, but it wasn't your rapist. Yeah, that's very true. Thank you for that as yeah. well. And then it's this other true. person, if you can realize that whatever happened between the two of you, she could not help herself. Oh, I yeah. And then let it go. You forgive her by realizing that you won't have to call her. If you understand okay. yourself, you understand her. But if you be- if you believe that you need to call her, then call her. Don't make it a big deal either way. Yeah, it's not. But it was very clear from our father that I needed to forgive her. So I just wanted to call you up and. There's never, you know. ever, ever, ever. I don't mm-hmm. care what happens to you. There's never, ever a reason not to forgive. You Absolutely. should always be forgiven and never get angry. Well, our brother did say on the cross, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. So, Yeah, never be angry. I appreciate never. it, Vicki. Yeah. Thank you so much. Be blessed, bro. You know I love you. Love Have you a too. wonderful day. Thank you. Amazing. Bye. Bye now. God bless. Bye. Amazing. Listen, callers, I, I wanted to get to Joe from Phoenix and other callers. I'm out of time. But if the Lord is willing and the creek don't rise, manhood tomorrow. I will be back. I'll be back. Get on that straight and narrow, folks. You can't take anyone with you either. This is a journey you must take alone. You got to travel this alone and work on you. Work on you. Work on you. And the way you work on you is by looking from within at the not you. Keep your eyes on you. The not you. All right, because you can't see the you yet. 
but watch did not you in the mind and emotions. All emotions are evil. All thoughts all the time are evil. It's a practical thought. You don't live by those. What you want for dinner, right? But all thoughts are all lies all the time about anything. All thoughts are all lies all the time about anything. And just watch this, watch it. Watch the night you are relaxed. And go through the hell. Go through the fire. And the other side is paradise. All right. Amazing. Thank you for your super chats and all those things. But stay with it. We appreciate your support. Stay with working on you. All right. The Hake Report is coming up now. The Hake. H-A-K-E Report. Dot com. Have a good day and amazing. track one time joe out friday here look stand up stand up we got fighting to do we gotta show him who boss he put a viking in you he put that lightning in you igniting the truth but you beg and blame and lie and hate and never want to stand for the truth so what you planning to do you understand in the loop you better go talk to your mama better stop at the drama better drop all the trauma boy you better stand up and up Put your hand up and hut, huh. cause if you don't then we lose, and then we gotta hear the fake news, whoa. Here's what I recommend. I invite you to download my silent prayer. And I want you to start doing it. You just download it, get the points of how to do it. And then after a while, you just do it on your own. It's going to point you in the right direction that your life will be returned to you from God. He will give you your life back. Because anyone and all people who has anger, they're not themselves. You are the person that you are angry at. That's why it's so important to get to know yourself so that you can see who you're angry at. And if you're doing the hooping and hollering prayers and things like that, some people get up, oh, praise the Lord, hoop and holler, bless my mama, bless my daddy. Continue to do it. Do both. You will see if you want to stay with the hooping and hollering or do you want to be still and know God. So my gift to you, no charge, at rebuildingtheman.com slash church. I noticed after a while that when these guys overcome their anger, they have amazing ideas about starting a business. But because they've been told that if you don't get a loan from the bank or if you don't have a five-year plan or if you don't do this, and it's just simply not true, it's the first step with faith, then all things are possible. So, But the most important thing is to return to the Father. That yearning that you have, that emptiness, that void, is not for more stuff. It's not for more friends. It is a return to the Father because there's no way you can return to God and be angry at your earthly father. So thank you all so, so much, right? People around the world donated to Bond at rebuildingtheman.com or they call 800-411-2663 and we're still committed to pointing the right way for men and women to return to the Father. 